Johannesburg, South Africa, the home of wheelchair basketball here in, in South Africa, the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. This weekend is the turn of some of the golden oldies from wheelchair basketball in South Africa as we bring to you today the WBSA Masters 3x3 National Tournament and uh, welcome to some of the uh, action here in Johannesburg. Uh, full day's uh, activities coming coming to you with all the uh, legends of wheelchair basketball from South Africa. Just about to get underway here in the next few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, not long to go before the start of this uh, 3x3 Masters tournament here in Johannesburg. Uh, just a few last minute adjustments to some of the teams and uh, we'll be getting underway shortly.
right, so welcome back to Mandeville Sports Centre here in Johannesburg. Uh, about to get underway with the uh, first of the uh, Masters 3x3 games. Uh, this game is between Ghostbusters and Chicago. Ghostbusters are the team in uh, bright pink and the uh, Chicago team is the team in navy and turquoise. Your Ghostbusters team is made up of uh, Marcus Retief, David Curl, Daniel Mpaki and Viv Sierra. And uh, the team from Chicago is made up of Cecil Dumont, Wilson Makobero and Yopi Victor. So some uh, well-known uh, names there in South African wheelchair basketball. Uh, of course, uh, a lot of ex national team players and some current national team players. The likes of uh, Marcus Retief, uh, Daniel Mpaki and Cecil Demont are all, uh, all part of the uh, national setup. Uh, despite their age, uh, still, still a lot left in those bones for these guys. Uh, Yuppie Victor on the ball now. Uh, uh, one of the uh, legends of South African wheelchair basketball as well as former South African uh, coach Viv Sierra. He's sitting on the subs bench at the moment but uh, have no doubt will be on the court shortly. Daniel Mpaki breaking into the key should convert and does just to remind everybody the um, 3x3 rules are of course slightly different to what you may be used to with the 5 and 5 game uh, every basket scored inside the arc is counts for one point and uh, uh, any any shot taken as a traditional three pointer counts for two and uh, some slight adaption uh, in this particular tournament to the normal 3x3 rules um, in the event of a foul during the act of shooting uh, the, uh, the uh, opposition the sorry um, offensive team taking the shot will be awarded with the point and uh, of course um, the game is first to 21 points or um, the high score at the end of the 12 minutes running time that we are playing with these uh, old buggers because they uh, some of them are probably on the basketball court for the first time in about 10 or 12 years uh, so some some slight adjustments to the rules were made by the tournament organizers Yopi Victor too long on the ball and the shot clock violation on that occasion Marcus Retief will bring the ball in for the Ghostbusters. Of course, uh, ball needs to be checked in, so he passed it to the opposition team there, and now uh, he's in possession. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. He'll look to play in uh, Daniel Mpaki. He will put up the shot. Unable to convert. Slight uh, adaptation again with the rules of this tournament. Players are allowed to pick up a rebound and convert. And Yopi Victor eventually converts for Chicago and the current score here at the moment Chicago 2 Ghostbusters 1 Yopi Victor looking to find Sister Demont but uh, long reach there from David Curl um, did not uh, did not clear there of course uh, when the offensive team picks up uh, a possession they need to clear the arc unless it's in a straight off a rebound and uh, David Curl for the Ghostbusters in possession looking to get the shot up foul called foul called uh, against uh, the Chicago team against a bit of confusion as to who that foul was against but uh, it was actually a foul by the Ghostbusters team so Yopi Victor plays it across to uh, Wilson Makabiru doesn't convert Yopi Victor will pick up the rebound behind the back pass here deflected away and should be the put in there by Chicago Just over seven minutes to play in this uh, first encounter. 
of course on court A we, we, ha we are currently using uh, the two courts uh, currently on uh, court B we have uh, the, the Bulls team up against the Rockets and, um, and but we'll bring you one one court at a time obviously Daniel Lampaki for the Coastbusters finds David Curl he converts Yopi Victor in possession now for the Chicago team. Shot goes up, he doesn't uh, convert. Marcus Retief will put up the rebound and doesn't, doesn't convert. And uh, Wilson Makubedu converts and the current score Chicago 4, Ghostbusters 3. David Curl puts up a shot, rebounds picked up there by Cecil DeMont, he's unable to convert and David Curl is unable to grab the possession, knocks the ball out of bounds and the Chicago team will have the put in. Yopi Victor once again in possession, looking for one of his teammates to make something happen and uh, decides to go backwards and now put up a shot. Just gets it up ahead of the shot clock, uh, shot clock. and uh, officials actually calling calling the uh, shot a, a 24, uh, sorry, a 14 second shot clock violation. And uh, Ghostbusters now in position. Victor up against uh, David Curl. Ball wasn't cleared there on that occasion, but uh, the referee seems to have missed that. Ghostbusters 5, uh, Chicago 4, Yuppie Victor trying to look for Cecil DeMont behind the back pass. Unfortunately, unable to collect and uh, the uh, Ghostbusters will pick up the possession. bit of confusion here with the officials not quite sure what the delay is slight adjustment to the wheels but it looks like it there for uh, Wilson Makabedu and uh, game will resume Ghostbusters with the possession. Daniel and Parkey looking to get the shot up, which he does. Uh, doesn't drop, picks up his own rebound. Can he convert? Unable to do so. Yopi Victor picks up the rebound. He too can't convert. And uh, Ghostbusters will retain the possession. Daniel and Parkey looking to work there with David Curl looking to pick him up he does and David Curl will put up the shot and convert so Ghostbusters now six uh, Chicago four Yopi Victor with the shot goes up hits uh, Marcus Retief on the back and luckily for the Ghostbusters and Paki finds David Curl uh, again the uh, Players should be clearing the arc on that occasion. Yopi Victor for the Chicago team spins around but unable to get the shot up. David Curl taps it away and uh, with just over two and a half minutes to play in this first encounter. Uh, the Ghostbusters lead Chicago by seven points to four, but Chicago have possession and they'll be looking to try and uh, narrow the deficit. 
Victor looking uh, to put up a two-point shot, but uh, shot clock beats him to the the buzzer, so to speak, and uh, Ghostbusters will now launch another attack with Daniel and Parkey looking to find David Cool with a long pass. He manages to do so, and David Cool should convert, does so, and uh, fouled whilst putting up that shot, so that will count as a as a, as a two-point shot. So Ghostbusters edging, edging to their first victory of this uh, WBSA 3x3 Masters t National Tournament. Uh, Cecil DeMont and Wilson Makaberu. Wayward pass there, unable to find Cecil DeMont. Of course, Cecil DeMont is the captain of the South African 3x3 team and uh, recently qualified for the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham next year. And of course, he'll lead the team in Birmingham. David Kuhl unable to convert on that occasion. And uh, Wilson Makabedo picks, picks up the rebound and uh, converts. So Chicago have five points, Ghostbusters nine. And just under a minute to go. Another point there for the uh, Ghostbusters. Shot goes up by DeMont, picks up his own rebound, ball deflected out of bounds there by, looks like, David Curl. so Chicago will have another chance to try and get some more points on the board. DeMont puts up the shot, doesn't, uh, doesn't convert. Sorry for the delay, the game's over there. Ghostbusters uh, taking the win there by 10 points to five.
All right, welcome back to the Mandeville Sports Centre. The second game uh, between uh, the Atlanta team that uh, is in orange, I think, and the Warriors team in the uh, the yellow and black. So part of that team, the, ye the yellow team there is Justin Govender, uh, also a former Paralympian. We've got uh, Rudolf Samuels and Richard Flatter Flattery. And for the Atlanta team, we've got uh, Dougie Vessels, we've got uh, James David, and Mukati Moledi. Okay, Warriors in position at the moment. Uh, Justin Governor for for the Warriors converts there. Okay, so scores are level here in uh, the at the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. Atlanta versus the Warriors. Just uh, over nine and a half minutes to play. These uh, teams uh, made up of uh, all the veteran players from uh, wheelchair basketball over the past uh, few years. Uh, a lot of these guys, of course, haven't played in over 10, 15 years, so it'll take a, a bit of adjustment, no doubt. And of course, uh, 3x3, the, that version of the game is uh, new to most people in uh, wheelchair basketball, let alone the, um, the, the, old, uh, the old bullets here. So they uh, having to get used to the uh, different format of the game. Uh, just to remind you, the games are 12 minutes running time. Um, 
any, any basket scored within the arc is a one point and any traditional three pointer is, uh, is a two point uh, play. Uh, first team to score 21 points wins the game or the team of the highest points after the 12 minutes. Uh, there have been some slight adjustments obviously to the normal 3x3 uh, rules uh, with some of these uh, players not necessarily being in the best of nick and uh, so it was decided to try and uh, make the games a little bit quicker for these guys to not uh, force us to rush off to any hospitals with any uh, heart injuries etc but uh, I'm uh, sure that everybody will have fun throughout this day. Of course, a one-day tournament and uh, two, two pools uh, of eight teams. And then uh, we'll obviously work our way through to a national 3x3 Masters Champion later today. Great, uh, great effort there by uh, Justin Governor, the former national team uh, player and Paralympian. So, Warriors edge ahead, three points to two versus the Atlanta team, made up of uh, Dougie Vessels, James Davids, and McCarty Moledi. And of course, the Atlanta team playing in orange and black, and uh, your Warriors team is in uh, lime green and black. As uh, Atlanta now in possession, trying to make something happen, but uh, turnover ball there, picked up by Richard Flattery for the Warriors team. Bit of confusion for these guys with some of the rules, and uh, Atlanta in possession now. Dougie Vessels unable to find uh, the pass there and uh, Warriors come away with it. Uh, Richard Flattery and uh, turns the ball over but uh, the Atlanta team put up the shot without clearing the arc so turnover ball so Warriors will have an opportunity to mount another attack and try and extend the two point lead they currently hold. Justin Govender puts up a pass to his teammate there, Rudolph Samuels, unable to convert. Justin Govender trying to pick up the rebound. He does. Finds Richard Fletchery. Fletchery looking to uh, put up the shot, which he does, and he converts. So Warriors extending their lead to three points now. We have just over five minutes to play. Smiles on the face there of Richard Flattery, obviously enjoying himself out there, which is of, of course what today is all about, is uh, enjoyment more so than uh, winning. Although if you tell some of the teams that, uh, they'd probably argue with me. Just as competitive as uh, they used to be back in the early 1930s when some of these guys were playing. Oh wait, the game only, the game only started in the mid 40s, my apologies. No look pass there, bye. Uh, Dougie Vessels and uh, Justin Govender picks it up but uh, didn't clear, didn't clear the arc and uh, turn over ball so Atla Atlanta will try and uh, narrow the deficit. Uh, Justin Govender taking his time to adjust to these rule changes. Dougie Vessels, four seconds on the shot clock. Doesn't look like they're going to get the shot up. And violation called against them. Of course, in this particular 3x3 tournament, they have 14 seconds to get a shot up. Shoot, shoot. 
Justin Governor trying to pass it straight back there to uh, Rudolph Samuels, but uh, unfortunately they turned the ball over and uh, Atlanta will gain the possession. Still a three points advantage to the Warriors and we have just over three minutes to play in this uh, second match on court A. Currently taking part on court uh, B, we have Cool Kids up against the Marinos. Team Oledi for the Atlanta team tries to get the shot up, he does, but uh, unsuccessful. So the Warriors will bring the ball back in with Justin Govender. And uh, in possession there is Rudolph Samuels. Balls bobbles off the chair there of the uh, Atlanta side and the uh, Warriors will maintain their position. Samuels for the Warriors. Looking to find Flattery, but uh, ball is uh, stolen there by the Atlanta side. Again, player needed to get the ball out, but the referees let the play go on. Flattery puts up the shot for the Warriors. Rebound picked up there by uh, Rudolph Samuels. No look, shot goes up, but he... Uh, wasn't able to convert. Some adjustments to the, uh, the the wheelchairs quickly so that they can get the game back on the on the go. Warriors will hand the ball over to Atlanta and uh, Atlanta looking to try and narrow this three-point deficit. Uh, just under a minute to play in this game. Doesn't look likely that Atlanta are going to manage a, a late comeback here. And Warriors, Warriors looking favourites to take this, uh, this encounter. 36 seconds left. Justin Govender. Looking for Richard Flattery, who finds Rudolph Samuel. Samuel puts the shot up. Unable to, to uh, convert. Picks up a rebound there. No look shot. And uh, ball goes out of bounds. 15 seconds left. Can uh, Warriors finish off strong and try and uh, convert a, a final uh, opportunity? Four seconds left. And it's going nowhere. So the Warriors will take away a victory here. Uh, the, uh, that uh, basket will in fact count as the scoreboard was uh, a bit late there. And uh, at the end of that game, Warriors 6, Atlanta 2. And the next... Uh, game coming up on uh, Corte is Thunder For Force versus the Vikings and we'll be back shortly.
right, uh, welcome back to the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre here. Game three on Corte now. Uh, this is up the game between the Thunder Force and the Vikings. The uh, Thunder Force team is made up of Greg Pinches, John Machete, Duncan Stewart and Mike Pretorius, and they play in the yellow and red. And they're up against the Vikings team in purple and orange. And the Vikings are made up of Johan Krause, Gideon Marburg, Tabojo Tanyane and Billy Mulder. Ball goes out of bounds. So the Vikings in possession. Willie Mulder, the current uh, South Africa under 23 head coach, finds uh, his teammate there, Tabojo Tanyani, and un unable to convert. And Mike Pretorius, Mike Pretorius uh, will bring it out, but uh, ball gets knocked out of his hand there by uh, Tanyani. Pretorius. Passes it off to John Machete. Pretorius puts up the shot. Unable to convert. And the apple will run out of bounds. So the Vikings in uh, purple and orange lead 1-0 against the uh, Thunder Force. Willie Mulder for the Vikings. Cutting in, puts up the shot. Foul is called, of course, uh, in this uh, particular tournament. Any foul whilst in the act of shooting and inside the key there will automatically mean that the Vikings uh, are awarded a point. So Vikings now two. No free throws. No free throws in this tournament. I think uh, some of the referees are also having to adjust to the rules. A uh, bit of confusion again. Number four for the uh, Thunder Force there is John Mas Machete. Mike Pretorius, of course. Mike Pretorius is the uh, chairman of the WBSA Masters Association. So getting stuck in and uh, getting this uh, particular event uh, off the ground. And it's been a a year in the making, a lot of hard work being put in by the Masters Committee, so it's great to see this particular tournament come to fruition and uh, uh, it will become an annual tournament, so every year we will have uh, the opportunity for the Golden Oldies to show their uh, skills on court. Mark. Mark Pretorius looking to put up the shot. He gets, the, gets it up just in time, but uh, doesn't reach the ring. So shot clock violation and the Thunder Force still unable to get any points on the board at this stage. Currently on uh, court B, we've got Maroon 5 up against Charlie's Angels.
and uh, well, welcome to everybody tuning into this uh, live stream. We uh, appreciate you supporting wheelchair basketball, and uh, good to see uh, Jacqueline Werdendahl supporting uh, the, the the Masters here, as well as uh, Francois Grobelaar and uh, Saeed Madalat, obviously watching uh, from across the across the continent up north and uh, good to see the people throughout Africa tuning into this uh, broadcast here from Johannesburg in South Africa of course uh, home of wheelchair basketball the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre the Vikings team currently pulling away with a four point lead here just over uh, just under five and a half minutes to play and just a reminder we're playing a 12 minutes running time version. Uh, no free throws, any foul in the act of shooting. The uh, offensive team will uh, automatically be awarded the points. Thunder Force desperately trying to get a shot up, trying to get some, some points on the board. And uh, unfortunately there for the Thunder Force, Duncan Stewart unable to, unable to uh, convert. But uh, as ever, Mike Pretorius remonstrating to the referees, trying to secure a point by uh, the foul in the act of shooting, but referees were having none of that. Okay, Thunder Force in possession. We've got just uh, over three minutes to play and a bit of a, a scrappy affair at the moment, but the Vikings are uh, holding a comfortable lead there. Mavili Mulder, the number five for the Vikings. Of course, a former national team player and uh, current SA Under-23 coach. Just over two minutes to play. Vikings seven and uh, you know, Thunder Force looks like they've just got their first basket with uh, Mike Pretorius converting there. Now Vili Mulder in possession for the Vikings. He'll put up the shot and uh, great shot there by the wily old Vili Mulder. Uh, Vikings eight, Thunder Force one as we head towards the last minute and a half of this uh, fourth, fifth encounter, uh, third encounter of the morning. <laughs> My 
Mike Paturas took too long there and Billy Mulder reached in. Knocked the ball out, but uh, the Thunder Force will have a chance now to try and get some more points on the board. And thanks to uh, Nikki Forbin, been away from WBSA for 15 years. And thanks for the support and tuning in to watch some of the golden oldies here in action at the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. Feel free to comment, uh, send out some shout outs here. We'll uh, try and give you some, uh, some love. Vikings there, put, a, put up the shot there. On that occasion, it was uh, Johan Krauser. All right, just uh, towards the last 10 seconds of the game and the uh, Thunder Force unable to convert. And that's the, uh, en that's the end of the game. Vikings winning this encounter quite convincingly by nine points to one. And uh, we'll be back shortly with the next encounter between Orlando and the Lions.
Okay, welcome back to the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre for the WBSA 3x3 Masters National Tournament. Uh, a chance for some of South Africa's stars from yesteryear to get back on court and uh, see if their uh, skills have uh, gone AWOL. And uh, on court now we have the uh, encounter between the, t the Team Orlando in the uh, blue and luminous green color and uh, the team in luminous green and black of course is the Lions the Orlando team consists of Adrian Hubbard Johnny Pelcure and uh, Calabone Masueo and uh, the Lions team made up of Martin Bass, Corey Joubert and Harold Theon Okay, so the Lions now in possession. Tipped away there by Adrian Hubbard. Um, of course, in this uh, scenario, the ball turnover, the players need to clear the three-point arc, which is what they are now doing. And now they can uh, launch their attack. So for the... Orlando team there is Caliborni Mosua unable to convert. Can the Lions convert? Ball out of bounds. So just a reminder, games are twelve minutes long uh, running time and uh, the other, the other scenario is the first team to 21 points. Uh, judging by some of the scores that we've uh, kick-started this 3x3 tournament on, uh, it's going to be the 12 minutes running time and, uh, by the looks of it. That will see the uh, winners at the end of the game. And of course, uh, one point scored for a shot inside the arc and two points outside the arc. So Orlando with possession. Adrian Hubbard for the Orlando team passes off to uh, Kelebone uh, Moseo. couple of players playing in their day chairs here but it's all about uh, of course having fun for these uh, veteran players and thanks for tuning in to this live feed feel free to send us some comments and we'll try and uh, Send a couple of shout outs to those uh, watching their loved ones playing here at this tournament. Of course, any fans uh, that remember some of these players from yesteryear. Lions team trying to extend their lead, unable to do so. Adrian Hubbard also unable to convert there. Good pass there. Great pass there by Adrian Hubbard. And uh, point given there to Orlando as the referee said it was in the act of shooting. As uh, Johnny Pelkia attempted the shot. So uh, Orlando now on, on the board. Thanks to Trudy Mulder sending some love to her husband, Vili, who of course uh, won with his team, the Vikings, in the previous encounter.
Keep those comments coming in, folks. Can the uh, Orlando side put up the shot? Uh, unable to do so as the ball was stolen and uh, the Lions through the big number four there convert. So the Lions five, Orlando one. We've just got six and a half minutes to play in this encounter. Can Orlando get some momentum going here and try and get a few points unanswered? All very static at the moment. And uh, shot clock runs out there. So possession now goes back to the Lions team. Good work there by Adrian Hubbard to prevent the Lions getting a, an attack, but uh, a loose ball picked up and the Lions convert regardless. So Lions 6, Orlando 1. Just over five and a half minutes to play. action coming to you live from the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre, the home of wheelchair basketball in South Africa. My name is Jerry Smith and uh, I'll be talking you through the action for the uh, entire day. Um, of course, uh, two, two pools uh, of uh, eight teams participating in this uh, 3x3 tournament. Uh, the first uh, pool stages, obviously, each of the teams play off against each other within their pools. We then move across to a crossover section, and then later on we will have our classification games um, with the final schedule to take place later on today, around about 4 o'clock. So be sure to stay with us the whole time. Get the fires going at home. Get your uh, iPads up and you can watch your loved ones playing here at the WBSA 3x3 Masters National Tournament. Shout out to Claire Hubbard, supporting Adrian, no doubt. So she shouts us for, come on, Orlando. So Orlando find themselves a bit, uh, a bit behind at this stage and time running out. Uh, two points to Orlando, seven to the Lions as the uh, shot clock stunts their uh, progress for, sorry the Lions progress Adrian Hubbard in position puts up the shot great shot there by Adrian Hubbard and uh, trying to rally his team to try and uh, fight back here it's, of course uh, basketball is a funny game you can think you have a comfortable lead and that can change in a matter of seconds but uh, I think in this version of the game, and specifically the fact that we have running time, it will be quite difficult for the Orlando team to come back here. But uh, again, Adrian Hubbard converts, so he's, uh, he's determined to make a fist of it for the Orlando team, as the Lions now will look to convert. Unable to do so, ball tapped out of bounds uh, should be should be Orlando's ball I'm not quite sure which way the referees called it and great to see uh, our friend H Hancock Hunger watching all the way from Namibia of course Hancock was recently here during the Commonwealth uh, Games 3x3 wheelchair basketball qualifiers here in South Africa with the Namibian side so Thanks for tuning in, Hancock. Hancock, should I say? Can the uh, Lions uh, extend their lead to five points? Just uh, over two minutes, ten to play in this game. Shot goes up. Great shot there from the Lions. And uh, they extend their lead now to five points. Lions, nine, Orlando. 
four. Adrian Hubbard in possession, puts up one handed shot. He'll take it, it works. Uh, five to the Orlando team, nine to the Lions. Well, uh, Lions team will try see out the this five point advantage, four point advantage, should I say? And uh, with just over a minute and just under a minute and a half to play, uh, Lions looking to try and extend their lead. Shot goes up, doesn't drop on that occasion, and uh, Hubbard will let it run out, and they'll pick up possession. Just over a minute to play. Lions 9, Orlando 5. Another conversion on that occasion for the Lions. And so they extend their lead to five points and we've got just over 40 seconds to play. Next uh, game coming up after this game, we'll have the Chicago team up against the Thunder Force. All right, folks, that's the uh, end of that uh, encounter. And the uh, Lions team edge out to a 10 points to six victory. Um, and we'll be moving across to Court B now to give the uh, teams in Pool B an opportunity. Um, and we'll be back shortly.
right, welcome back to the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre as we move across to Court B now and we'll uh, bring you the encounter between Maroon 5, uh, coincidentally in Maroon, up against the Rockets team in blue. Your Rockets team in blue was made up of Sami Mohotzi, Etienne Base, Moses Komani and Velapi Dlamini. And the Maroon 5 team is made, made up of Jacques van Skalkweg, Donny Smith and Gilles de Corte. So we're underway here with this uh, encounter between the Rockets and uh, Maroon 5. And uh, immediately the Rockets uh, take, uh, take the lead. Donnie Smith uh, for Maroon 5 finds... Uh, Jacques van Skalkveik who converts. Rockets uh, try to get the shot up uh, just before the shot clock violation and uh, unable to do so. Thank you to um, Alberto from Italia, uh, commending WBSA on a Masters 3x3 tournament. And uh, of course, this is the inaugural Masters uh, event here in South Africa and uh, planned to become an annual event. So a big shout out to all involved in getting this uh, particular tournament uh, up and running. Shout out to Senzo Luvuno. Rockets in possession. Uh, scores are level at the moment. Maroon 5 up against the Rockets. Rockets get the shot up. Donny Smith will pick up the rebound for Maroon 5. And he converts. Shot goes up from Sammy Mahotsi there for the rocket side. Donnie Smith tries uh, to get in the, on the action. Rebound picked up by Maroon 5, but uh, tapped out of uh, uh, the big number six there. His hands and uh, Maroon 5 unable to, to convert. levels to all we've just got over eight minutes 40 to play in this uh, court B action uh, pool B of course and uh, a reminder 12 minutes running time for this particular 3x3 event and uh, if after if uh, any team gets to 21 points first the game stops no matter where where we are in that particular uh, part of the game. Every point scored inside the arc, of course, one point, and every shot outside the arc, two points, and a slight adaption to the normal 3x3 rules. Any uh, shot in the act of shooting, uh, the offensive team will automatically be awarded the relevant points. So, Maroon 5 and Rockets locked in at three points apiece here. Uh, 
thank you to Susan Decker, the South African senior women's team manager watching this uh, live stream and uh, she says it's great to see the Masters on court and uh, sending her love to everybody. Right, Maroon 5 in position. Trail the Rockets by one point and uh, trying to draw level here. Donnie Smith in position. Puts up the one-handed shot. Doesn't drop. Trying to work hard to get the ball back and uh, good work there from Rockets player there Velapi Dlamini who gets the shot up and was fouled in the act of shooting basket should count and they will be awarded the one point so that should have effectively been a two point play there for the Rockets Good defensive work again by the Rockets. Just over five and a half minutes to play in this encounter between Maroon 5 and the Rockets. Maroon 5 trail the Rockets by three and Donnie Smith trying his best to try and get a shot up looking for the foul. But uh, good work there by the Rockets and uh, Rockets extend their lead now to four points. Lamini for the Rockets uh, seems to be their danger man and is uh, converting well. Tony Smith looking to put up the shot, closely watched by Lamini. Rockets will pick up the rebound and get it up and uh, once again convert. So Maroon 5 are finding themselves six points behind and we have just <coughs> under four and a half minutes to play. for the Rockets. Lamini unable to convert on that occasion. And Etienne Base picks up the rebound. Almost uh, causes the turnover there, but uh, Rockets still in position. And, uh, Sami Mohotse Just over three minutes to play in this game and Etienne base for the Rockets now. Donnie Smith uh, picks up the rebound for Maroon 5 and uh, makes a hash of that particular shot. Bit of an air ball there and uh, Rockets lead by nine points to three, making it quite difficult for Maroon 5. And once again, Velapi Dlamini currently plays for the Colosco Lions in the Supersport Wheelchair Basketball Series, of course. So still very fit and active, as does uh, uh, Donnie Smith, of course, plays for the D 
Diesel Electric Services Eagles. So a couple of uh, current players in, in this particular encounter like up against some of the uh, retired veteran players who I'm sure are relishing uh, this opportunity to get back in court. I'm suspecting a couple of uh, physiotherapists and chiropractors will be busy the coming week and some of these guys will will feel it uh, in the in the next few days Defensive work there on that occasion by Donnie Smith, making it uh, difficult for the Rockets to break into the zone and uh, forces the turnover. So he will now try and make something happen here for Maroon 5. He puts up the long two-point attempt, uh, rebounds off the ring, and Lamini will launch it in and uh, unable to convert on that occasion are the Rockets. Just over 30 seconds left and the uh, Rockets team are going to walk away with the victory here in this encounter as we as we approach the pretty much the halfway halfway stages of this uh, pool, pool stage of this particular tournament and just a reminder uh, three rounds this is the first round where the teams will play off within the two pools and then thereafter we'll go to a, a crossover playoffs and then later on of course the finals and the different uh, placing uh, playoffs keep those comments uh, coming in folks and uh, thank you for tuning in to our coverage here of the WBSA Masters 3x3 National Tournament. Alright, so the end of that particular encounter, the Rockets team were proved too strong and uh, next up on court we will have the Ghostbusters up against the Vikings.
All right, welcome back to the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. On court uh, B at the moment, we've got the Ghostbusters in uh, bright pink, and they're taking on the Vikings team in the purple and orange. Ghostbusters made up of uh, Marcus Retief, uh, David Curl, Daniel Mpaki, and the uh, legend Viv Sierra. And uh, for the Vikings team, we have Johan Krauser, Gideon Marburg, uh, Tabocha Tanyane, and Willy Mulder. Ghostbusters into an early two point lead, and David Curl will uh, extend that to three points. Vikings, of course, winning their first encounter this earlier this morning, and uh, they'll be looking to knock over the Ghostbusters who also won their first encounter. Good long pass there to uh, Johan Krauser, but unfortunately was unable to convert. And uh, Ghostbusters race out to a four-point lead. Just over ten and a half minutes to play here. We welcome everybody tuning in from all over the continent and the rest of the world. And uh, we hope you are enjoying our coverage of our inaugural WBSA 3XC Masters uh, wheelchair basketball tournament. And uh, feel free to send us your comments or shout outs and we'll uh, try and uh, get them mentioned on air. David Curl for the Ghostbusters. Shot went up by Daniel and Pocky just in time, uh, despite the shot clock buzzer going, and uh, Ghostbusters lead convincingly 6 to 0. Can the Vikings get back into it? They can't on that occasion. David Kuhl, though, picks up the rebound. So 7 to the Ghostbusters, zip to the Vikings. Not, no, no team have gotten over the 10-point uh, mark uh, so far this morning on, on our live stream games anyway. I'm not quite sure about the other games that weren't screened. Uh, but uh, Ghostbusters will be looking to try and uh, see if they can be the first team to hit the 21-point mark. Uh, on paper, probably the strongest looking team. So we'll probably look towards the Ghostbusters and possibly the Vikings might be the teams to watch for the finals later. It's if the uh, crossover playoffs, of course, uh, uh, allow that to happen. So. Ghostbusters uh, convincingly in the lead with 10 points to zero. And Willie Mulder unable to get a shot up in time, so that was the shot clock uh, violation. Good to see uh, national team Amo Wheeler boy Zakele Shilembe watching uh, some of his uh, predecessors on court. Mulder puts up the shot and uh, good effort there by the South African under 23 head coach Willie Mulder and he gets uh, the Vikings on the board and that was given as a, a two point shot on that occasion but uh, I think uh, quite fortunate David Cole unable to make that one Count so Ghostbusters 11, Vikings 2, and it's uh, just over 7 minutes 20. Sorry, just over 7 minutes 10 to play. Mm 
Wimbledon they're unable to convert on the occasion and uh, David Curl now in possession for the Ghostbusters tries to get it to as the shot clock went off but it was for the uh, court A so Ghostbusters 12 Vikings 2 so 10 point lead here David Curl punishing the Vikings they're not keeping him from uh, picking up the rebounds So with just under six minutes to play, uh, Ghostbusters convincingly in the lead, 14 points to three against the Vikings here, Vikings in position. Shot goes up. Good work there on that occasion by the Vikings player there, Tabojo Tanyane. And David Curl for the Ghostbusters, edging towards that 21 point mark. So. Ghostbusters looking to try and finish this game earlier than the uh, 12 uh, minutes allotted time. Shot goes up from the Vikings there. Turnover. Thanks to South African men's head coach Max McLean for tuning in to this live stream saying that these uh, these old men are looking good at this stage uh, maybe max is uh, seeing if there's any uh, any talent still on offer from some of these old old chaps and david cool would probably be one of those and he converts once again and ghostbusters 17 vikings 3 still four minutes 30 to play so Every opportunity now for the Ghostbusters team to reach that 21 point mark. Foul in the act of shooting there, and of course, in this uh, ad adapted version of our 3x3 rules, uh, they award the point. So it should, should read Ghostbusters 18, Vikings 4. We'll correct that shortly. Ghostbusters four points away now. Three points away, should I say, by apologies. Can the Vikings get another couple of points on the board? Marcus Retief uh, hits, uh, hits that one. So Ghostbusters two points away from uh, claiming victory in this uh, game with just, over, just under three minutes to play. Willie Mulder puts up the shot, doesn't drop. Marcus Retief and uh, David Curl unable to make it count. Uh, just not dropping and David Curl converts once again. So one point away. David Curl goes off, Danny and Parkey comes on. for the Vikings looking to put something up. So, 
Ghostbusters one point away from claiming victory here. Marcus Retief puts up a shot. Doesn't drop on that occasion. Looking to break in, finds uh, Daniel Mpaki, finds Viv Sierra. Viv Sierra trying to get the shot up, but I think the... Yep, the, that's the game. Ghost, Ghostbusters have won this game 21 points to four as that last uh, attempted shot by Viv Sierra. He was fouled, so 21 points to four. The Ghostbusters now remain undefeated. And coming up, we will have the encounter between the um, Cool Kids and Baby Sharks on Court A.
Yeah, man. Watch it, watch it. Watch out, watch out, watch out.
All right, folks, welcome back to the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. Uh, we will be bringing you the match now between Cool Kids and Baby Sharks. The Baby Sharks team in uh, black and lime green and the Cool Kids are playing in black and pink. So hopefully we won't have too much of a clash. At least the uh, bright neon colours should help the teams. The Cool Kids side is uh, made up of uh, Tolumzi Schlope, Marius Petorius and Peter uh, Mechoe. Your Baby Sharks is Henry van Weyck, Daniel Nuke, Vic Ryder and John Flink. So, game's underway. Daniel Nuke steals the ball away there and uh, automatically uh, converts. So, Baby Sharks take an early lead. Big shout out to everybody tuning in here. Uh, thanks to uh, Linda Morgas for your comments. I see uh, husband Craig Morgas, of course, president of WBSA, watching live from our boardroom. Uh, Yolanda Hutchinson giving a shout out to Donnie Smith. Uh, unfortunately, Donnie's team uh, lost the previous encounter. Baby Sharks with possession now. Daniel Nuke lays it off to uh, his teammate there, number, the number six for the Baby Sharks. Nuke stretches out his long arm. It's a bit, uh, a bit scrappy at the moment here, but uh, Baby Sharks will hand the possession back to the cool kids. Daniel Nuke for Baby Sharks puts up the shot, doesn't drop. Cool kids looking to make something happen there, and they are fouled, so that is a point to the cool kids, of course. Uh, in our amended version of the 3x3 rules here for this WBSA Masters 3x3 competition. We have um, uh, any, any shot in the act of shooting and there's a foul. The uh, offensive team automatically gets uh, the, the points awarded and of course if they're outside the arc it'll be two points awarded. Cool kids trying to get something going there and Daniel Nuki rips the ball away in the normal version of the game the teams would need to clear the arc uh, Daniel Nuki for Baby Sharks, the uh, Zimbabwean international player. And manages to get the shot up, but the rebound picked up there by the cool kids. Uh, and they convert, so scores are level, cool kids and Baby Sharks. Just over eight minutes to play. Good shot there from Daniel Nuke. Baby Sharks three. Of course, coming up uh, early December, we have the uh, IWBF Under-23 
um, Afro World Qualifiers being hosted here at this very venue, the Vodacom Manival Indoor Sports Centre, and uh, the teams from South Africa, Liberia, and the Democratic Republic of Congo will take part in this uh, qualifiers that will see one of the teams represent the African continent in Japan next year, 2022, in Chiba in, uh, in June. So some uh, good international wheelchair basketball coming to you in December. And of course, that will be broadcast live here on Wheelchair Basketball South Africa's uh, Facebook page, as well as uh, IWBF World's Facebook and YouTube channels. Uh, 3x3 version of the game. It's quite new to uh, wheelchair basketball on an official uh, capacity. Of course, it's been played for a few years, but uh, recently the Commonwealth Games uh, 3x3 wheelchair basketball qualifiers were hosted here in South Africa with uh, the South African men and South African women team winning those respective uh, tournaments, and they will represent the African continent at next year's Commonwealth Games, which will be held in Birmingham in, the, in England. And of course, uh, they will take on the likes of the host nation England and uh, an additional European uh, nation and uh, the likes of Canada, Australia, of all of whom have still to qualify. So uh, we will see who the final teams are early next year. But uh, South Africa, of course, the first team to qualify for the Commonwealth Games. So and of course, uh, IWBF Africa also see the 3x3 version of the game as a, a vital uh, part of their development program and uh, 2022 they're looking to launch a African uh, 3, 3x3 tour around the uh, different zones of course Africa splits into five zones and uh, the idea is to have six uh, or well, five zonal tournaments and a, and a continental tournament at the end of next year so a lot of 3x3 basketball looking to happen in the uh, next year in 2022. In the meantime here, Baby Sharks lead the Cool Kids by five points to two. And we've got just under four and a half minutes to play. Cool kids uh, put up the shot there and uh, unable to convert on that occasion. Baby Sharks six, Cool Kids two. Just over four and a half minutes to play on this uh, court A. Of course, uh, action on both our courts at the moment. Uh, Vikings are taking on the. Uh, Yeah, Vikings taking on Chicago on the uh, court B at the moment. Next, next up uh, on court A, we will have the uh, team from Atlanta taking on Orlando, and on court B, Bulls versus Maroon Five. So we'll bring you the game between the, the Bulls and Maroon Five next up on court B.
Good shot there by Daniel Nuke. Baby Sharks lead by seven points to three, and Daniel Nuke will pick up the possession. screen there we have uh, WBSA president uh, Craig Murgas So Baby Sharks uh, holding a six-point lead now with just over a minute to play. And looks looking likely that they will register a win. And uh, the, the cool kids uh, struggling in this particular encounter. Good to see uh, Kyle Bowles, the uh, Amawila boy, currently out injured. Hope you are doing well there, Kyle, and your injury is making uh, good progress. And that, uh, folks, is the end of this particular game. Baby Sharks winning this by nine points to three. And we'll be back shortly with the encounter between the Bulls and Maroon 5 on Court B.
right, welcome back to the uh, Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. We're bringing you the encounter between the Bulls and Maroon 5 here at the WBSA 3x3 Masters National Tournament. And uh, joining me in uh, commentary, I have Mr. Craig Morgas, of course, President of Wheelchair Basketball South Africa. Welcome, Craig. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's awesome to be here, man. And Craig, of course, you... Uh, you, uh, we were expecting to see you on court today, but uh, you tell me you have a shoulder injury or, or you had an op recently. Has that put pay to your wheelchair basketball career? It has. It had put pay years ago. Um, it's a basketball injury, and yeah, if I do try and play now, my arm will probably fall off and we'll have. Uh, so, other than the age being the obstacle, the arm is the, also <laughs> the obstacle. So, but yeah, it's, oh, this is something else. Eh? Great to see this particular tournament up and running. I think it's something that uh, the uh, Masters, Masters Committee have been working hard to get to get off the ground, and um, uh, you know, it's uh, it's great great to see. And I'm sure these guys are having a lot of fun out there. It's been a brilliant effort. I mean, uh, you know, Mike Mike and his team, <laughs> you know, hats off to them. They've pushed and pushed for this. I mean, we've been trying to do something on this level uh, for years. You know, ever since I did retire from the whole thing, we've been trying to push for a Masters event and just not been able to get off the ground. But, you know, Mike and his team, and Mike especially, you know, if it wasn't for him pushing this thing, you know, this wouldn't come to, to fruition. And look at what we've got here. You know, this is something else. You know, I'm, I'm trying to keep the emotions behind this, but he's seen all these old faces um, and, and, and seen them just, just competing. Um, you know, it's just, it's just something else. And, uh, and of course, uh, any any uh, other Masters aged players out there watching, um, you know, the idea is that this will be an, an annual event. So, you know, hopefully we can grow grow this. And I think the 3x3 version of the game is probably the best best uh, best way to do it. I think so. I think that you know that has been our hiccup previously is to try and run the the full court five man. I think we'd have to have uh, literally a hospital outside here to be able to deal with that. But, you know, with the introduction of three-on-three, three, it's been, you know, it's opened the doors for us. I mean, this, this is exactly what, uh, what the sport needed. And, you know, the age group, you know, you, there's always something that you can do after you've tried to compete competitively. And, yes, you know, we're going to do this on an annual basis. Um, we're going to try and put support and resources behind it to grow it even further. But for anybody out watching out there, you can see it, life is not gone. You know, you don't have to sit and, 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 and do nothing or play golf like I do. But uh, <laughs> you can come out here and, and participate. And, you know, hopefully we can get some real attraction from, from, from some sponsors and things like that and make it bigger and better. Absolutely, absolutely um, Craig. Yeah, and, it's, uh, you know, and, and hopefully getting these guys back on court, who knows where they might, uh, you know, bring back uh, their expertise to the to the younger the youngsters out there and uh, let's uh, let's hope that we, you know we can make it a win-win for everybody i mean we've always been looking for that we've always been looking for putting back in the sport it's what i've tried to do you know after i got so much out of this um so much out of the sport itself and you know we're always looking for the guys you know you know and you from the high performance environment you know the coaching just coaching of our development getting that involved just managing coaching and, and just helping, you know, is, is, is the actual what you need. And here it is, you know, the, the amount of talent that there's still easier to see some of the guys still performing, still with their mind in it, with their head about the game, um, you know, not losing anything um, other than the age and the gray hair. You know, it's exactly what we need. And this is definitely a, a push for us in the right direction, I think. Well, on, on court, of course, we've got the, uh, the, the Bulls team up against Maroon 5, uh, I'll let you figure it out. The Bulls team are in blue. <laughs> okay. And uh, Maroon 5 would be the team in uh, Maroon. Uh, Donnie Smith, of course, uh, current national squad player. Uh, and uh, Granville Gra Caesar, ex uh, Western Province player. Yeah, some of these players are actually even before my time. Uh, <laughs> Craig and I'm uh, pushing the 50 marks. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm only 15. I mean, I was a junior when I was playing against some of these players. I mean, the likes of Viv and that being 74. Uh, you know, when, when I got into the sport, Viv was one of the elders already. So, you know, it's yeah. Jake's here, uh, Ralph Reynolds here, all come through the ranks, you know, all in their 50s or late 50s, gain on 60. But, yeah, this is incredible. 
course, uh, some of these guys like Rolf Reynolds there who put, puts up a, a really ugly air ball there. So <laughs> some of his, uh, his uh, young students in the Western Cape don't, uh, don't use that as an example of a good shot. Uh, but yes, Rolf, of course, uh, very active in development uh, in South Africa, especially in the, in the Western Cape. So uh, it's good to see him having an opportunity to, to get on court himself. Yes, it's, you know, it's, it's that kind of story that we're looking for in terms of putting back into the sport. Very passionate about the kids back home. Uh, he was just telling me now, you know, there's another 20, a group of 20 kids that they found out in George now. Um, so they get out to George to, to push the program there. So that's wonderful. Absolutely what we're looking for. Yeah, and a very uh, active member of our high performance department. Uh, he's one of those uh, passionate guys that just uh, rubs, rubs off on everybody. So yeah, it's good, good never to see. Never says die. Absolutely never says die. Yeah. Maroon uh, 5 leading the Bulls by 5 points to 3. Just over five and a half minutes to, to play. And uh, uh, Craig, in terms of the uh, re rest of uh, the program, uh, obviously South Africa looking to uh, qualify for the uh, under 23 world champs and having just qualified for the Commonwealth Games. Um, how are you finding the uh, prospects for, for wheelchair basketball in South Africa at the moment? I think it's looking good. You know, we've been We've been, our high performance program has been going for years and, you know, the focus has really been on on trying to get these spots in the various tournaments. Now with the introduction of, of the three-on-three, -three, um, you know, we've been able to get the youngsters through that program um, and then into the senior sides. And it's, it's, it's again, it, it's, you know, it has to be all about the youth. So, you know, the prospects going forward is, is, is brilliant for us because, you know, trying to, we got to not qualify for the under-23s and the senior worlds are also coming up um, soon as well. So I think South Africa has set it up, up very well. I think during COVID, we were able just to keep some form of momentum, um, you know, via the virtual things that you guys were doing and the coaching and stuff like that. It's been tough. It's been tough for everybody. You know, in unprecedented times, it sort of created almost an, an equal platform for us. And we've seen... We've seen now in the pre, you know, in the, in the three on threes what that has done. You know, it's allowed certain certain groupings to come through, and the younger guys have come through that ranks, and the senior guys, you know, have either solidified where they need to be, or you know, kind of part of the process. So, I think going forward, um, it looks good. It's it's what we are looking for, um, and and let's hope we can deliver. I mean, the the, the big one is 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 the qualifiers happening. Um, in Ethiopia, so I think we're ready for that. Um, uh, you know, it's 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 one of the prestigious ones in terms of the IWBF calendar. So, you know, it's something that we've worked hard towards, and I've got full faith that you know we'll pull it through. Um, and other than the Commonwealth Games, which we have, which has been wonderful, that both men and women qualified for that. You know, let's see. Hopefully, our, our guys can pull it through for the under 23s. Yeah, absolutely. And I must say the. Uh the youngsters coming through the under-23 program. There's some exciting talent there. And uh, in fact, uh, a, a good uh, four or five of them are knocking on the door for the senior team going to Ethiopia. So you know, I think uh, promising times ahead. And uh, I think there's been a whole lot of you know, hard work. And uh, you know, it's, kinda, it's kind of steered us in good, in, in good sort of going forward in terms of what we need to be doing. I mean, we've been... We've been in the international environment for a while. We've had our hiccups, we've had ups and downs. You know, it's been a 20 odd year program that we've kind of been working towards. So at some point it needs to pay off. And I think this is where it is paying off at the moment. Um, and like you said, you know, these guys that are knocking at the doors of the scene is exactly what we're looking for, you know. Um, and all countries are doing that. When you look at the makeup of Canada, you look at the makeup of the UK and stuff like that, they've all done that. They've done that through the youth programs, and look at where they are now. They're winning medals. Yeah, exactly. I had a had a chat with uh, Trooper Johnson, of course, the senior women's uh, coach for the USA, and the uh, team that went to Tokyo. Now, uh, I think eight, eight of them took part in the under 25 worlds, and um, he he sort of suggested that that was the, what we are doing is the right right way to go. And um, and of course, uh, next year, obviously, looking to to try and get something going on our youth development and the schools program. Uh, so, yeah, all, all exciting things happening in wheelchair basketball in South Africa. Absolutely. So at the moment, yeah, and on court, uh, 
Maroon 5 uh, edging towards victory. 11 points to 5 over the Bulls team. Some interesting names here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> interesting to see how they put it together. <laughs> I think uh, all, all in the, all in the uh, name of fun, of course. Yep. And... Uh, I alluded earlier to the fact that I think there'll be a few chiropractors and physiotherapists Ooh, getting yeah. a few calls uh, later this week. I mean, if the first thing you ask everybody, have you taken your medication for today is something, <laughs> <laughs> something hectic. <so. laughs> I hope it's all being cleared by water, of course. <laughs> if they come here, they're going to have a feel there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's much in terms of performance enhancing no. going on Yeah, It's just to keep you upright, I think. Here we uh, go. Just Gazing across to Corte, I see Etienne Base there looking absolutely shattered. Ooh. Of course, uh, it's uh, quite warm in the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre, so that's uh, going to be making it difficult for a lot of these uh, old guys as we wind down to the last 30 seconds. And of course, the next uh, game that we'll bring to you is the last of the Pool B encounter between, well, the last of the Pool stages of uh, Warriors up against the Lions. See the pace gets very slow as the dying seconds are coming in there. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, in, the, in, standing the, still there. in the team meetings this morning, there was a, a, a sigh of relief when uh, the, uh, the Charles Saunders uh, said that we were doing 12 minute running uh. time and not 10 minute stop start. So the guys <laughs> were quite relieved about that. Yeah. And obviously, we have adapted the 3x3. Rule slightly, but I think it uh, works for the for the Masters. All right, so that was the uh, game between Maroon Five and Bulls. So Maroon Five edging the Bulls out there, and uh, we'll come back shortly with the game between Warriors and Lions. All right, welcome back to the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. Uh, we move across to Corte now. We've got uh, the team in blue, the Rockets, and they're taking, a ga uh, uh, they're taking on the uh, Charlie's Angels, uh, the team in green. Of course, uh, Charlie's Angels is made up of, uh, if I can find my team sheet here, uh, Derek Koch, Rolf Williams, uh, Aranpai Mawabi, and uh, Fred Ganyapu. And uh, of course, the team in blue Rockets, Simi Mohotsi, Etienne Base, Moses Komani, and Vilapi Dlamini. So, some, uh, some current and uh, 
and uh, obviously uh, very experienced Paralympians here, yeah, Rolf Williams being uh, the main one to look out for, and being the, the man on the, in possession of the ball now. And uh, Fred Ganyapu currently plays his uh, wheelchair basketball for the Diesel Electric Services Eagles, based here at the Mandeville Indoor Sports Center, and they play in the Supersport Wheelchair Basketball Series. Rolf Williams converts. Etienne base for the Rockets. Blue. Of course, still with me in commentary here is uh, Craig Murgas. Uh, Craig, of course, uh, Rolf Williams, as I mentioned earlier, uh, an ex Paralympic player. And still very uh, passionate about the games. Yes, look at that. <laughs> Trademark. Trademark Ralph. Uh, Rolf told me, I think, three seasons ago he was retiring and <laughs> still pops up on court. And, uh... and Ralph started playing, I think, about a couple of years after I had got into the game. So we've been teammates for, while well, we were teammates for years. Kind of the go to player. When in trouble, get the ball to Ralph. Of course, uh, oh, very, very good with, uh, with the kids. I've seen him uh, coaching some of the youngsters and parting on his knowledge. And again, as we said earlier, very important that some of these players uh, do exactly that. Trying to make something happen. Looking to play it into Fred Ganyapu, the Zimbabwean oh. born player, and he uh, converts to Charlie's Angels and the Rockets. Charlie's Angels lead by three points to two. Just over eight and a half minutes to play. Keep those comments coming in, uh, folks. Good to see uh, IWF Africa Secretary General Andrew Skuman watching. Um, and uh, great, he says it's great to see the old boys on court. And the 3x3 version of this game is an ideal vehicle for the Masters. in base up against uh, Rolf Williams there Rolf unable to convert but Velapi Lamini oh, nice. does exactly that and uh, he plays his uh, trade with for the Colosco Lions in the Will Super Sport Wheelchair Basketball Series so current player but uh, quite a few Masters players actually still playing in the uh, top level so it's good to see them uh, staying fit and uh, Still competing. Oh, nice rebound again. And uh, Craig, just from a an RWBF world perspective. Um, Obviously, you, you sit on the executive council. 3x3, quite, quite a, uh, an important uh, vehicle for them as well. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, we've always been looking for some form of a, a development environment. And, you know, 3x3, when it presented itself, it, it was actually that. You know, years ago, um, we had tried the likes of twin basketball, which was not as similar as this, but, you know, it was a format of development. It didn't quite work out for us but with this format it is brilliant and especially the way we've adapted it is and as you see here you can get two games on one court so you know facilities it doesn't matter where you are you know this game could be picked up um, and we've seen that you've seen that coming through in your Commonwealth qualifiers where countries we never expected to be performing on a on a on an international basis have come through and really played well so it's 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 something we put our our energies behind you know the five on five game you know will continue in strength I think you know I think it's it's I wouldn't say it's reached its ceiling but it's at a point where you know a lot not a lot more other than the performance of those teams um, could get better so you know the effort now to try and get three on three especially in the developing countries when you know you, you literally just need four people um, 
and, and, and you don't really need a coach, um, and they could be playing. Um, uh, Craig, uh, um, just as, as you alluded to, some of the Mino countries, if you look at the uh, able-bodied version of the game, uh, countries like Mongolia and Same, yeah. you know they they uh, actually end up specialising in the this game. So I probably see an opportunity. We saw the likes of the the Gambia, um, Rwanda, you know Namibia, and all of that playing in the Commonwealth qualifiers, which was amazing to see. Yeah. And um, there was some skill there, definitely. And Absolutely. I can see them, you know, developing it into you know where they they st you know uh, knock over some of the more fancy traditional powerhouses. I think, you know, and that's, that's the point, you know, you don't need, because you don't need the 11 man or 12 man squads that you need over the various points in that, I think it makes it a lot easier for these guys to be able to put a team together um, in, in, in these countries. And, you know, it, it just requires, you know, you're not, there's no transition game here and it's really just working in the court. So you're really creating some good key players, you know, they can play inside the key and or outside shooting, you know, field goal shooting and stuff like that, which is what you need in the five game. So, uh, you know, you're not looking at, at the whole transition and, and the fitness that is required, although they, you know, at this point, the three on three game is trying to get to a point where the fitness is going to be uh, a telling factor in it. But in the beginning stages, you know, if the guy can shoot, he can play, you know, and it's, it's really, it's a silly, you know, the pickup game, the old street ball game from, from, from Able Bods is exactly what it is. And from that came some serious NBA talent and some serious world talent came out of those. So it's what we're expecting here. And, and you know, again, money has always been an issue and resources have always been an issue worldwide. But with the three on three, like I said, you know, you don't have to be, you don't need a court structure. You just need to be able to get, you know, a, a kind of rectangular court somewhere in a basket and you're able to hold a tournament and play games. So the resources that you need is, is cut drastically in terms of the five-on-five five game and hence these countries are coming through and winning. And we, like you said, you see it with the able one. You would never expect countries like Mongolia and that to be competing against the likes of Spain and, and France and all those good, you know, the top teams out there, and they are. And they're beating them. <laughs> you know, exactly, so. yeah. And again, also, you know, we, we talk about, obviously, wheelchair basketball has quite an expensive entry in, into the sport with the, the, the equipment needed. Um, and, and the 3x3 version gives the uh, development, specifically, I, re I refer to the schools, for example. You know, uh, I know in South Africa, a lot of the schools aren't able to field full 5-on-5 full five five squads, but it, certainly they'll be able to to do that with the 3x3 so it's something I think WBSA is looking at uh, at how to yeah. how to look at that because that is a, uh, an area that we maybe need to put, put a bit more focus on going forward and again like you say you know it's it's easier now to, to, to have a form of competition like you said when you have schools that really can't and especially with points introducing 14 points they can't really put those teams together and, and hence the participation has been down in a lot of schools now with the schools program running on a three on three you know, a school can feel three or four teams itself um, in this format where they, you know, were struggling to put one team together. So, you know, it, it bodes well going forward in terms of all those competitions. And it's exactly what we need to take us forward into our programs. You know, so you come through the schools, you get into uh, our high performance environment, you get into our super sport, you get into the various tournaments that we have. Um, it, it starts to create stages for that to happen. Um, and then eventually, you know, you get into a South African side which is competing internationally. So I think from that level, it is brilliant. It's something that we've needed for years. Um, you know, back in the day, we used to take it as street ball out there, take a portable post and go play at shopping centers. This is exactly what it is. But instead of just being a demonstration thing, like you see here, full on tournaments can be held over the weekend. I mean, there are 15 teams here this weekend. Uh, but you can get through all 15 teams in, in a day. In a day, and and, and 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 to any potential sort of corporate uh, watching this uh, uh, stream, I mean, as you mentioned, we we can have an event in any unique destination. You know, we've seen overseas where they've played it under the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> they played it in, in uh, St Paul's Cathedral in some of the. You know, so it can really, we can take it to top of Table Mountain if we wanted to. So it really is an exciting uh, version of the game. And um, 
yeah, it's uh, looking forward to 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 where it t uh, takes us. Right. So after all of that, uh, that uh, last game went by quite quickly with the uh, Charlie's Angels team uh, winning that encounter against the Rockets, and we're now going to go through to the next encounter, which is the Ghostbusters and Thunder Force, which is the last of the pool stages. And as Craig mentioned, just like that, we've uh, finished the uh, pool stage uh, version of the, this competition. A reminder that uh, um, we will then move across to a crossover playoffs. Um, and then later on, we will have uh, the uh, classification of seventh, seventh and eighth place playoff. We'll have a fifth and sixth, third, fourth, and of course the final later on. After this uh, game between Ghostbusters and Thunder Force, uh, we will break for a lunch break and uh, we will be returning roughly 30 minutes after, after that. All right, welcome back to the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. The final pool stage match of this, the WBSA 3x3 Masters Tournament between the Ghostbusters in the bright pink and black uniforms and they are up against the Thunder Force team uh, in yellow and red. And with me in commentary still is uh, Craig Morgas. Craig, we spoke about Mike Pretorius, uh, all, the, all the good work that he's done to get this tournament off the ground, and now we see him on court there, and unintentionally sends David Cole. And doing the same old thing. Flying to the court. <laughs> that is typical, Mike. And Craig, uh, just talk to us about some of these players on court. Uh, yes, number seven. <laughs> <laughs> And as you see, Mike trying to make it difficult for David to get back in. Number seven, Duncan Stewart, uh, South African player with Mike back in the day. Uh, him and Viv. Viv's not on court now. Our oldest player here, been 74. Uh, 
I think there's at least all but two players here that have been ex-South African players back in the day. Played for years. I mean, going back to the yeah, days when we were still playing under the darkness of um, Rebel Tours and, and that type of thing, the likes of Mike and Duncan um, and Viv were those players that were traveling the world trying to you know, bring this awareness that you know we do have this down in South Africa. We're not, we're not all bad, um, and you know we're not all about the racial connotations that that came with South Africa. And they, they pioneered the way going forward for us getting back into the international scene. And of course, uh, <clears throat> David Cole uh, no longer involved, but yeah. uh, certainly looks in good nick. <laughs> yes, very fit. Very fit player. For a master. <laughs> Unfortunately, not available to to the uh, setup at the moment. And your old stalwart Marcus Retief being yeah, Marcus still involved. Still going. Uh, and told me he certainly feels it a lot more than he used to. <laughs> but also another player that uh, st still still involved, but works works well. Uh, he, he's been working with uh, some of the. Uh, low pointers from the under 23 side and giving them a lot of advice so you know these under 23 players are learning a lot from some of these senior players yes with Marcus I mean Marcus is probably one of the best low pointers one point range that we've had um, over the years so that's exceptional that he's actually working with our, our juniors to try and you know because it's not an easy task um, in the five on five game the low pointers really have a tough task with them um, they normally, you know, almost do the dog's work out there yes. and never really get the acknowledgement for the amount of effort they put into it and, and work hard at doing whatever they need to be doing on the court. So, look at that. <laughs> just, That's just a to, pity. Just to uh, explain to maybe any viewers there that are not quite sure how the different points work here in wheelchair basketball. Um, obviously, the different disabilities are ranks into different classification points uh, here on the three on three 3x3 three version of the game the, uh, the players on court cannot exceed eight and a half points um, so your players that are sort of paraplegic players are more your low pointers and your your single amputees and, and those sort of players are your high, higher pointers and it ranges in between there yes and it, you know it is a it is a functional uh, classification environment so it's not really your primary if your primary is an amputee but you could also they also you know we also look at your functional and how you function on the court and in the chair it's a little bit different for the masters I think there's a <laughs> mobility becomes a little bit constrained but do they have a classification for age <laughs> <laughs> I think yes the, low, <laughs> the older you get <laughs> the, 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 the lower your points I think become. we'll have to talk to the uh, organizers here <laughs> I know in uh, in the Super Sport League, if they have uh, junior players, they they give an exception to points, and I think a player like Viv Sierra should be yes. should be given a bit of a concession there. I'm not sure what the opposite to a rookie is, so maybe we should come <laughs> up with something for our for this tournament because that's definitely. I mean, 74 years old and to still be gay. Yeah, I think we should have something like the croc, the old croc of the year, <laughs> or something. And Viv's trademark hook shot, he still got it. But as you say, great to see. Them on court again. Still got it. Yes. I mean, the likes of Mike Pretorius, they don't change. Absolutely don't change. We, Over the years, the two of us have some interesting tussles. It's a wonder we're still alive after some of the fights we've had. In the spirit of the game, but... <laughs> all, all good fun. All good fun. David Cole converts there for the Ghostbusters. Great basket. And I would say... Just from what I'm seeing, I would uh, I would be surprised if the Ghostbusters don't play in the final later. But funnier things have happened, of course. Very strong outfit, of course. David Cole, Daniel Mpaki, Marcus Retief, and Viv Sierra. As well. That's the nice thing about this format is you know anything can happen. Um, you know because of the nature of you just having to get in there and score. Underdogs are the teams that really come through in this format. So. You may be showing very good and it turns around within seconds.
bit of uh, banter between uh, Retief and Pretorius there. Of course, uh, uh, at the end of uh, today's proceedings, I'm sure the players will uh, enjoy uh, the odd beverage or two. <laughs> yes, that goes with the game, eh? Really to get the energy back. Absolutely, yeah. But, uh, nothing else. <laughs> but I think that's a competition on its own. Bit scrappy at the moment yeah. out there. <laughs> I think, uh, I think the uh, some, some tired uh, muscles are starting to form there. Oh, uh, Mike! Mike Pretorius for Thunder Force gets him on the board. Shot goes up by Daniel Mpaki for the Ghostbusters, doesn't drop. And uh, Duncan Stewart picks up the rebound and, and Mike, uh, again. Mike Pretorius narrows that gap to three points. Is it two points? Mpaki. Great hook shot there by Daniel. Underarm shot makes it count. Viv Zero looks quite fetching in pink. <laughs> looks like the referee's uh, not really calling the three second rule. Marcus Retief. Oh, great pass, good. Extends the Ghostbusters lead to. Eight points to two. I think the Ghostbusters definitely a well oiled team. But what you're going to see from Mike now is some of the uh, the dirty tricks. Dirt, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so watch him carefully. He's busy doing it right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> his feet comes off the bar and you know that type of thing. <laughs> Tanigan Parky spinning him around. Mike Petrus getting a little bit dizzy there. Yeah. And Parky puts up the shot, doesn't drop on that occasion. Oh. Mike Petrus. There we go, he... forceful stuff. No. no. A bit, bit of a tired shot on that occasion. Yeah, it's a pity. And we have 35 seconds left of this final pool stage game, and the Ghostbusters will remain undefeated. And will claim a victory here against the Thunder Force. Shot needs to go up. Oh. Marcus Retief trying a hook shot, decides rather to give it to Viv Sierra. By rights they should clear the arc, but I think uh, there's certainly some rule changes that I haven't been, uh, been, we did been briefed that. on. We did <laughs> mention that before. There's a bit of referee's license, yes. <laughs> and that's the end of the game. So, Ghostbusters win this encounter by eight points to two. And uh, that takes us now through to the lunch break. So, once again, from the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre, bringing you live coverage of the WBSA Masters 3x3 wheelchair basketball tournament as our veteran players get the opportunity now to strut their stuff on court and uh, have a bit of fun and we'll be back here in Johannesburg in about half an hour to 45 minutes time after our lunch break for the crossover stage as well as the final see you back shortly that's nice yeah I like that
Welcome back to the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre here in Johannesburg, South Africa. We're at the WBSA 3x3 Masters National Tournament, the inaugural one for 2021. Uh, just completed the morning session with the pool stages and now uh, it goes to the crossovers where we work our way down to the final which will come to you later on. Next up on court is the first of the crossovers. We've got the Lions versus the Cool Kids. The Lions are the team in uh, bright green and the Cool Kids are the team in black and bright pink. Lions team, of course, Martin Base, Corey Joubert, uh, Harold Theon, and the Cool Kids team is made up of Tolumzi Schlope, Marius Pretorius, and Peter Machoe. Lions team uh, managed to get the first points on the board and uh, will look to dominate the cool kids side. Good work there by the Lions. Unable to convert. Rebound picked up. Didn't uh, didn't drop. And ball out of bounds. After the uh, pool stage matches. The uh, Ghostbusters team went undefeated and, and looked like the uh, team to beat for this particular tournament. Referee Charles Minetti there, originally from Mozambique, now playing his tried here in South Africa. Good work there by the Lions and adding to their tally. It's uh, two, two points to no return from the Cool Kids. Just welcoming everybody tuning in from all over the world to see uh, the action on court with the uh, the old guys, of course, uh, Masters Tournament, uh, all the stars from yesteryear. And good to see the likes of uh, Nolin Naidu, Bongan Kozi Calvin, and of course, Super Superman Nagumbi watching this uh, live coverage. It's the inaugural 3x3 Masters uh, Tournament and uh, as we discussed earlier in our broadcast, looking to make this an uh, annual event and uh, the, uh, the old guys are having a lot of fun at the couple of shattered looking guys at the lunch break uh, earlier and of course quite a hot day here in Johannesburg so not making it uh, easy at all. So. I think uh, the game, the pace of the game will slow it down quite considerably as we get on later on in the day. Lions uh, leading the Cool Kids by four points to zero. Cool Kids, the team in black, and the Lions, the team in green.
just under seven minutes to play. Lions lead five. Null to the uh, against the cool kids. Lions now extending their lead to six points to zero. So just a reminder, slight adaptation to the 3x3 normal rules and for these Masters tournaments. Uh, it was decided to play these games in a 12-minute running uh, clock time frame to uh, allow for minimal heart attack risk, as well as uh, the uh, every time a player in the act of shooting is fouled, the well, they will be immediately awarded one point if they in the arc, and anything outside the arc, they'll be immediately awarded two points. Lions trying to extend the lead. Foul is called. It wasn't uh, wasn't a active shooting foul. In fact, it goes against the Lions. So the cool kids will try and get some points on the board here. Shot goes up, unable to convert, and the Lions will come away with it. Just under five minutes left in this game. Lions quite comfortable at this stage. Seven points to one up against the Cool Kids. Lions, of course, in the lime green and the Cool Kids in the black and pink. Big shout out again to our major sponsor, Cecil part of the uh, technical development program. Uh, all the referees, of course, uh, involved in that program. And, of and another shout out to our other sponsors, of course, Supersport, bringing us the Supersport Wheelchair Basketball Series, as well as Vodacom for the Vodacom Wheelchair Basketball Series. Another, sh another appreciation to uh, Additional sponsors, Diesel Electric Services, who sponsor the Diesel Electric Services Eagles in the Supersport Wheelchair Basketball Series, as well as uh, Koloska for the sponsorship of the Koloska Lions. And we really appreciate all the corporate sponsorships and it makes it possible for us to keep the sport going and, of course, bringing you this coverage. kids in position trying to get uh, another point on the board but uh, struggling but on that occasion managed to to do that and uh, the Lions lead the cool kids by eight points to two there by the Lions to pick up again the rebound and uh, extend their lead out to a seven point advantage and we've got just over a minute to play a couple of the old guys in centre there by Rolf Reynolds from the Western Cape and a lot of uh, a lot of excitement at, at the uh, lunch break uh, 
all the players uh, reminiscing over the good old days. We were just short a few cigars and a, and a nice aged brandy there. But uh, all good fun being had here at the Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. Just over 30 seconds left in this encounter. So it looks like the Lions will move themselves over to the uh, positional playoffs coming up shortly. And the following match, we will see the tournament favourites, judging by the results from earlier, Ghostbusters, and they'll take on the Rockets. And that coming to you in the next couple of minutes. And uh, the Lions will look to finish this game off strong. And they do, and uh, that should be that. So the Lions progress, and it, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that will be the end of the uh, uh, campaign for the cool kids, but they will, of course, play in the uh, playoff spots for the lower positions. We'll be back shortly with the game between Ghostbusters and Rockets. We're back here at the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre and we have the game between Ghostbusters and Rockets. Uh, Ghostbusters in the bright pink and the Rockets team in blue. Ghostbusters team uh, consists of Marcus Retief, David Curl, Daniel Mpaki and the legend Viv Sierra. And of course uh, the Rockets team was made up of Sami Mahotsi, Etienne Base, Moses Komani, and Velapi Dlamini. Two of the stronger sides in this particular tournament. So let's see if the Rockets can knock over the Ghostbusters. It begs us to call, ask the question. If they can, then who will be the team to most likely make it through to the finals but at this stage definitely looking like the Ghostbusters are the team to beat just a slight uh, technical glitch with our scoreboard but we'll have it up and running shortly Rockets pick up the rebound and uh, convert so Good start here by both teams. Rockets in possession now. Sami Mahotsi unable to get the, uh, the shot up and then that, that occasion 
they managed to do so, so... Fifth Sierra finding Daniel Mpaki. Daniel Mpaki puts up the shot and converts. And the score here is Ghostbusters 15, Rockets 7. Another conversion there for the Rockets by uh, Velapi Lamnini. And uh, Ghost, Ghostbusters in the lead, 15 points to 9. All right, so well done there to the Ghostbusters, knocking over the Rockets, and uh, we're going to move across to Court A now for the match between Orlando and the Baby Sharks. All right, we're about to get underway now with the uh, game between Orlando and the Baby Sharks. I, I'm doing my utmost best not to break into the Baby Sharks song. So in the meantime, let's uh, go through the team list here. The uh, Baby Sharks team uh, consists of Henry van Veek, Daniel Nuki, Vic Ryder and John Flink. And the uh, Orlando team consists of Adrian Hubbard, Johnny Pelcure, and Caliboni Masoyo. Uh, keep those uh, comments coming in, guys. Uh, good to see everybody tuned in, watching this live stream. Uh, to all of those on our Wheelchair Basketball South Africa's uh, Facebook page, as well as Basketball Sheriff's YouTube channel. Uh, good, good to have the guys from Basketball Sheriff here bringing us these pictures. So, shot goes up for the Orlando team there. Still, still no score at the moment. Sorry, one, one point each for the, both teams. And Adrian Hubbard for the Orlando team puts up the shot, doesn't, doesn't uh, convert. And Daniel Nuki trying to finish it off with his rebound. It's not uh, dropping for him. And eventually a foul is called against the uh, Orlando's player. I think it was Adrian Hubbard. Of course, that uh, was an act of shooting foul, so that means that uh, automatically the Baby Sharks are awarded that point. Adrian Hubbard swings it across uh, to Kelebani Masueo. Good work again by Daniel Nuke. 
steals the ball away from Johnny Pelcure. successful on that occasion is Nuke. So Baby Sharks only hold a narrow one-point lead at this stage. Just over seven, just under seven minutes to go. As we are working our way through the knockout stages now. So obviously teams that lose in these uh, Encounters are, are sent through to the, the losers round robin, uh, sorry, losers uh, uh, playoff places, and the winning teams will battle it out for the uh, top spots. second violation called there probably the first three second violation called all day okay currently on uh, court B we've got the matchup between the Chicago team and they're taking on the Charlie's Angels but we've we're on court with the Orlando team as they take on the Baby Sharks. Baby Sharks, of course, in the black and uh, bright yellow. And at the moment, both teams level two apiece. Daniel Nuki for the Baby Sharks. Sharks are trailing by one point, just under three and a half minutes to play in this game. And uh, Nuki unable to convert, but picks up his own rebound. Trying to, trying to uh, play, play in his teammate there. Warm day here in Johannesburg, and uh, the heat uh, will be draining a lot of these uh, senior citizens, including this commentator. <laughs> and a nice turnout uh, from spectator wise, and a lot of fun being had here at the Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre as we bring some of yesteryear back to wheelchair basketball here in South Africa. Daniel Nuki. Foul there. And uh, good work there by Kelebone Mishwea. And of course, uh, basket will count, and he'll get the additional point as the basketball, basketball was successful. So that uh, worked out quite well for Orlando there. With just uh, under two minutes ago, they have a three-point advantage and uh, Baby Sharks will be desperately wanting to convert as time runs out. Daniel Nuke in and out shot there. Orlando pick up the rebound and they convert. A little bit of an upset brewing. Yeah, it would have called the Baby Sharks the favorites for this particular encounter. But uh, nice work there by Adrian Hubbard and uh, Orlando now 
have a four point advantage and we head towards the final minute of this game so it's, if the baby sharks are going to grab anything from this game it's going to have to happen very quickly Daniel Nuki sets himself up converts the shot he'll, he'll need to uh, get hold of that position quite quickly but uh, the Orlando team very composed Adrian Hubbard looking to set something up takes his time shot clock down to one but it's uh, a little too little too late for the baby sharks and uh, they will have to go to find mommy shark and daddy shark and uh, commiserate as the Orlando team magically win this particular encounter Unable to convert Daniel Nuki on the two-point attempt. And 12 seconds left. So the baby sharks. Unable to uh, clinch a victory. Well done to Orlando. As they will progress to the knockout stages. So the final score there. Orlando six. Baby Sharks 3. We'll be back shortly for the game between the Vikings and the Bulls.
All right, so welcome back to the Vodacom Manual Indoor Sports Center. Uh, a few seconds away from the game between uh, the Vikings and the Bulls. Of course, the Blue Bulls are in blue and the Vikings are in purple and orange. The players to watch out for in the Vikings is... Uh, of course, Willy Mulder, 
Uh, he's teamed up with Tebojo Tenyane, Gideon Marburg, and Johan Kraus. And then for the Bulls team, we've got Donnie Stein, we've got uh, Rolf Reynolds, and Eric Sambogo. Uh, it's the uh, standard afternoon thunder shower bangs onto the roofs here at the Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. Uh, we are edging our way down towards the uh, knockout stages. Of course, the, after this, we'll have the semi final encounters. So, the Bulls. We'll try and uh, get themselves onto the board. Vikings pick up the rebound. Billy Mulder unsuccessful on that occasion. But uh, shot there converted for the Vikings by Tabojo Tanyane. Billy Mulder converts again for the Vikings. So Vikings edge to a three-point lead. Good work there. Rolf Reynolds trying to get the shot up, decides to rather to pass it. Uh, unfortunately for the Bulls, unable to convert. And uh, good work in the zone by Rolf Reynolds, the Western Cape player, lucky not to be called for the foul. Vikings though, looking to extend their lead to four points. A bit scrappy at the moment. Lions, sorry, the Bulls unable to convert and the Vikings bring the ball out with uh, Tebojo Tanyane. Vikings extend their lead now to four points to zero. Can Willie Mulder convert? Can't Rolf Reynolds unable to pick it up? Sorry, not Rolf Reynolds. That was uh, Eric Simbojo. Reynolds unable to pick up the ball. Of course, the uh, 3x3 ball that you see the guys playing with, slightly smaller than your regulation 5-5 five five ball. It's the uh, size 6 ball, normally played with by the women, but the weight is the exact same weight as the traditional basketball. Of course, 3x3 basketball is often played in an outdoor environment, and uh, that is the reason for the slightly heavier ball, so that in windier conditions, it doesn't uh, pay, have too much effect. But of course, here at the Vodacom Indoor Sports Center, the wind is pretty much non-existent. Rolf Reynolds not happy with something and uh, remonstrating with uh, the referee. Vikings now with Billy Mulder. He converts. Former national team player Billy Mulder, now the head coach of the South African under 23 national team. Uh, Rolf Reynolds. And the Bulls get onto the scoreboard. No, unsuccessful there. 
a real character of the game is Rolf Reynolds. Right idea there by the Vikings, but uh, players just not on the same wavelength. Willie Mulder puts up his hand and apologizes for not seeing that opportunity. And uh, Bulls trying to get some points on, but really struggling as the Vikings look like the uh, stronger outfit here. Just over, well, just under six and a half minutes to play in this uh, encounter. And following this, we'll have the matchup between the Thunder Force and Maroon 5. Sounds like a cartoon of note. Reynolds <laughs> Rolf Reynolds trying to get the shot up but uh, unable to do so Bulls not having much joy here and the Vikings pick up the rebound convert it and uh, extend their lead to seven points. Vikings eight, Bulls one. Great to see viewers tuning in from all over the African continent. Thanks for supporting us. Najma Hayan, uh, shout out to Tr Trudy Mulder, supporting her husband on court at the moment, Vili Mulder. Somebody got uh, a smack in the face there. And Rolf Reynolds desperately trying to get some points on. Another fine example for his junior players on how not to finish. Running repairs there to Rolf Reynolds. I'm sure he will feel that tomorrow. Vikings make a substitution. Willie Muller sits out for the next few minutes. And uh, Bulls trying to get some points on the board. Shot goes up. Bit of a Hail Mary, but they'll take it. And they seem to be having a lot of fun though, regardless of what the scoreboard is showing. Vikings again convert. All that last effort there from the Bulls, boy them to Finished strongly in this encounter. Still three and a half minutes to play. Rolf Reynolds having an absolute ball on court. We've had uh, many a international match where Rolf Reynolds has, of course, been the official mascot and cheerleader and got the crowds going. So very boisterous uh, individual, but uh, absolutely passionate about the game of wheelchair basketball. Vikings extend their lead, 11 points to three. Rolf Williams there in the green, the number three for 
the uh, Charlie's Angels team there, also having a chuckle at his fellow Cape Townian, Rolf Reynolds, who will try and celebrate if he can score in this. Showing his students again. Never give up because eventually it has to, it has to drop. And he misses. Back to the drawing board there. Rolf Reynolds, he'll need to get back onto the uh, practice court this week. And uh, perhaps some of the juniors can show him how it's done at uh, the national camp next weekend here in Johannesburg. We're starting to question whether Reynolds is actually playing for the Vikings. But a lot of fun being had. All right, Rolf Reynolds, can he convert one? Taking his time. For all those wanting to learn how to shoot at wheelchair basketball, it's called the beef concept. Balance, eyes, elbow, and follow through. And Rolf Reynolds is not showing us how that is done, unfortunately. So just over a minute to play here. Uh, Vikings uh, cruising to victory against the Bulls. Bulls, however, not giving up, still trying to get something in there. Uh, all got a bit scrappy though. One of those uh, occasions where they could shoot for the rest of the day and it's not going to drop. So just under 30 seconds to play. Vikings will not be successful and will get the put in. So the Vikings will win this game by 12 points to four as the uh, clock winds down and that should be it. Vikings add, add one more point. So Vikings 13, Bulls three, and we will be back shortly with the game between Thunder Force and Maroon Fire. Great, at great uh, spirits here with the WBSA 3x3 Masters Tournament and uh, we'll be back shortly.
All right, welcome back to the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. And we're bringing you the game between Thunder Force and Maroon 5. Thunder Force team made up of uh, John Machete, Duncan Stewart and Mike Pretorius. And of course the Maroon 5 side, Jacques van Skolkweg, Donnie Smith and Gilles de Corte. Mike Pretorius in possession now for the Thunder Force, of course. Thunder Force, the team in yellow and red, playing the Maroon 5 team in maroon. Donnie Smith for the Maroon 5 side has to put up the shot because the shot clock was about to go. Didn't drop for him, but the rebound rolls back towards him, so he's able to start it again. Good quick turn there, closely watched by Mike Pretorius. And <clears throat> good defensive play by the Thunder Force. Number four for the Maroon 5 side there is uh, Granville Caesar. Good no look pass there for Maroon 5. Donnie Smith unable to convert. So, just under 10 minutes left in this game. And we have a one point advantage to Maroon 5. Shot clock violation, so ball's turned over and uh, Maroon 5 will have an opportunity to try and get another point on the board. Good play there by Donnie Smith trying to get uh, Granville Caesar in, but uh, Ball rolls out of bounds and the Thunder Force will pick up the possession. Johnny Smith in possession for Maroon 5. But taking too long as the shot clock uh, buzzer sounds. So Thunder Force will try and draw things level with just under eight minutes to play here at the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. Of course, we are bringing you the WBSA 3x3 Masters National Tournament, the inaugural event for the Masters. And uh, WBSA will be making this an annual annual tournament and giving the players from the from yesteryear the opportunity to, to stay involved in the game and it's good to see and a lot of fun being had by all these teams and players. Mike Pretorius for Thunder Force. Desperately trying to work his way in, but good defensive player there by the Maroon 5 team, not letting them break the key.
This tournament, of course, almost acting as a as a reunion for players that haven't seen each other for many a year, and uh, some good stories at lunchtime, lots of laughs. Guys reminiscing about the good old days. Back in Nam. Namibia. Gideon, sorry, uh, Mike Pretorius in possession for Thunder Force. Still unable to get any points on the board. The defensive play by the Maroon 5 outfit has been pretty solid. And uh, at last, Mike Pretorius draws things level. A very low scoring game here. Just over six minutes to play. And we're locked in one apiece. So the Thunderbirds in the lead now, two points to one, and uh, just over four minutes 40 to play in this uh, encounter as the rain starts pouring down outside and uh, making uh, the noise levels here at the Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre quite uh, impressive. Mike Pretorius in possession. Unfortunately, the Thunder Force took too long. And uh, the fact that Thunder Force are in the lead is probably the ex explanation for why the heavens have opened up outside. A lot of thunder, thunder out there. And it's thunder on court now as the Thunder Force looking to try and Hold on to the narrow one-point lead here against Maroon 5. Mike Pretorius. Another long shot goes up. Rebound uh, this occasion picked up by Maroon 5. So they uh, draw level again. And just a reminder that if at the end of the game... The scores are level. We go into a extra period uh, session and the adapted rules of this particular competition is the first team to score wins the game. So teams would uh, prefer to avoid that scenario, although it, uh, it's looking likely we might have that here in this particular game. But let's wait and see. Donny Smith uh, puts up the shot, unable to convert. Thunder Force also unable to make a count on this occasion. Mike Pretorius didn't clear it. So <laughs> ah, foul, false was he was fouled in the act of shooting, so the basket counted, and they were awarded the one point. So now Thunder Force take a two-point lead with just. Under two and a half minutes to play. Maroon <laughs> 5 desperately trying to work their way back in. I can see Donnie Smith there, the number six for Maroon 5, quite frustrated with his teammate. <laughs> Mike Pretorius there. I would say not grasping the rules of the game, but I think he totally grasped the rules of the game. 
but it's a bit of gamesmanship there, of course. We are, we are playing running time, so he is definitely wasting some time there. A very wily old character is old Mark Pretorius. He'll put uh, Granville Caesar under pressure. They do need to clear this ball though, but uh, once again, not doing so. So, going into the final minute of this uh, encounter. Thunder Force holding a uh, narrow two-point lead, but have possession with Mike Pretorius. And unfortunately for them, shot clock goes off, and Maroon 5 will quickly want to get this game restarted. Gamesmanship there from Mike Pretorius, holding onto the ball whilst the clock's running down. Referees will just need to keep an eye on that one. And Pretorius though, picks up the rebound and uh, extends the Thunder Force's lead to a three-point advantage in one of the lowest scoring games. Absolute skullduggery going on here with Mike Pretorius. Maroon 5 though, too little too late, but we'll try and uh, get some final points on the board. And somewhat in slow motion they managed to pick the ball up and uh, that, that'll be the end of the game and uh, Maroon 5 unable to knock over the Thunder Force and the final score Thunder Force 5, Maroon 5, 2.
Okay, welcome back to the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Center here in South Africa as we bring you the WBSA 3 Extreme Masters National Tournament. And on court, we have the Ghostbusters in the bright pink kit taking on Orlando in the luminous blue and yellow kit. This uh, encounter is in fact our first semi-final and the winner of this match should be uh, going to, well, we will play in the final a bit later on. So Ghostbusters grab the lead. Ken Orlando with Adrian Hubbard. Reply in quickly, but uh, shot doesn't drop, and uh, 
Ghostbusters player there, David Curl, picks up the rebound. And the game is stopped so that one of the Orlando players can uh, adjust their wheels. David Cole for the Ghostbusters sets himself up, looks for Marcus Retief, who puts up a shot under pressure there from the Orlando players. And uh, Orlando draw level with uh, Adrian Hubbard. Daniel and Parkey for the Ghostbusters. against the uh, Orlando team so uh, the Ghostbusters will be awarded the one point for the act of shooting foul good steal there from David Curl looking to get Marcus Retief in there quickly he doesn't but now eventually he does and Marcus Retief will Convert, so the Ghostbusters now extend their lead to four points to one. Ghostbusters team comprises of Marcus Retief, David Curl, Daniel Mpaki and uh, Viv Sierra. And of course the team from Orlando, Adrian Hubbard, Johnny Pelcure and Kelabani Masuero. David Cole for the Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call? David Call. He converts. Adrian Hubbard for the Orlando team. Can he make some magic here? Mickey Mouse would be proud. Johnny uh, Pelcure is having a bit of uh, problems there with his wheels. The Ghostbusters now with Daniel Mpaki. Puts up the shot and converts it. So with just uh, going on seven minutes to go in this game, Ghostbusters extend their lead to five points. Adrian Hubbard, not quite sure what to do, decides to pass it off to Killer Boni Mishra and Adrian Hubbard. Converts for Orlando, so narrows the deficit to uh, four points. David Cole. Foul on Daniel Mpaki as he was uh, taking that shot. So another point will go to the Ghostbusters team. This is substitution for Ghostbusters and in comes Viv Sierra.
David Cole. David Cole trying to use his height, does a fadeaway jumper, doesn't work. And uh, quickly back up. Good uh, work there by the Orlando players. Narrowing the deficit back down to four. David Cole put up another shot short on that occasion and uh, Orlando will try now and reduce the deficit to three. Wayward pass on that occasion from Adrian Hubbard and uh, Marcus Retief picks up the ball and we'll have the uh, put in for the Ghostbusters and we have just under 4 minutes 40 to go. David Curl. Scrappy from both sides right now, and uh, David Cole trying to launch a, an attack here, and he does put up the shot, but rebound collected by Orlando, and seems to be just not happening for either team right now. And uh, David Cole takes a tumble to the floor. Adrian Hubbard for Orlando. Kelaboni Mercer unable to convert. And uh, final three minutes of this game. Viv Sierra. Finds Marcus Retief, puts up a, puts up the shot and uh, extends the Ghostbusters lead to 8-3 and can he do it? Can he add to that? But he can't and uh, Adrian Hubbard now trying to convert for Orlando doesn't drop. David Cole eventually converts there for the Ghostbusters. And uh, as we move into the final two minutes of the game, the Ghostbusters are leading the Orlando team by nine points to three. Can Hubbard work his way out of the cupboard? Just not uh, falling for the Orlando team at the moment. So, uh, with the clock uh, moving us down into the final minute of the game, and, uh, Ghostbusters holding a comfortable six point lead and uh, will progress to the next phase of the competition.
David Cole for the Ghostbusters. Out to Viv Sierra. Puts up the shot. Shot clock violation. So the Ghostbusters win that encounter by nine points to three over the Orlando team. And uh, we'll be back shortly with the uh, next of the semi-final matches. All right, welcome back to the Mandeville, Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre, bringing you the games between, uh, sorry, for the WBSA Masters 3x3 National Tournament. Uh, my name's Jerry Smith, and I'm commentating all the way through to the final match this afternoon, and on court, Thunder Force versus Vikings. Thunder Force team is John Masethe, Duncan Stewart, Mike Pretorius, and the Vikings team, Johan Krauser, Gideon Marburg, Te Bojo, Tenyane, and Billy Mulder.
Shot goes up there for the Vikings by Tabojo uh, Tanyane, but uh, doesn't drop, so the uh, Thunder Force will have the opportunity to mount probably their, one of their first attacks and try and get some scoring on this particular scoreboard. No luck on that occasion. Willie Mulder trying to convert for the Vikings. Doesn't happen. And Thunder Force will slowly race out to pick up the slow break and they will get the next play under play. <laughs> Definitely introducing some new terminology into the, the sport of basketball in today's games. No longer is it the fast break, definitely the slow break. But that's all good. The guys are having fun on court, and that's what it's all about. Vili Mulder for the Thunder Force. Sorry, for the Vikings. Knocked out of bounds there by the Thunder Force, and Vikings should have the... Uh, put in from the top of the key. A couple of the guys playing in their, in their day chairs, but uh, still having a load of fun here at the 2021 WBSA 3x3 Masters National Tournament, the very first Masters event ever held by WBSA. Duncan Stewart hands it over to Mike, Pret Mike Pretorius. with eight, just over eight minutes to play. Another low scoring encounter and I definitely think the, uh, the, the age is coming into this uh, play at the moment as the uh, guys have been at it all morning. A lot of these guys I don't think have been on a wheelchair onto a, onto a basketball court in a good 15, 20 years. So definitely catching up with them at this late stage. Thunder Force lead the Vikings by two points to one. Mike Pretorius for the Thunder Force in possession. But uh, good line defense there by the Vikings and uh, shot clock violation, much to the disgust of Mike Pretorius. I don't think they even had clocks in his day when he was playing wheelchair basketball. So for him, this is a new concept. They used the 24-shot sundial, and uh, now he's having to get used to the clock. <laughs> Vikings, Vikings convert there, so le draw level. Willie Mulder gets it underway for the Vikings, trying to 
still the lead here. Shot goes up, Bosco will count as he was fouled in the act of shooting. So Vikings should be up by uh, three points to two. Mike Pretorius. Shot goes up, doesn't drop. Bit of a rush shot because of the 14 second shot clock. Just over four minutes 20 to play in this uh, game between the Thunder Force and the Vikings. Vikings hold a narrow three points to two lead. Thunder Force in possession now with Mike Pretorius. Duncan Stewart lays it back to Mike Pretorius. John Masethe, but again the uh, shot clock violation is called against the Thunder Force and uh, Vikings will try and extend their lead if they can with Willie Mulder in possession. Shot goes up. Unfortunately, it doesn't drop. But Mike Pretorius is uh, on hand to convert the rebound, so it draws it level. And with three minutes and uh, ten seconds left, we have a tied game here, three all, between Thunder Force and the Vikings. Vikings in possession. They'll try and uh, get themselves in the lead with Willy Mulder, who converts. Ball bobbling around the around the wheels of those uh, three players there, and uh, jump ball called, and the Vikings will pick up the possession. <laughs> Hadn't quite found his range on that particular shot. So Thunder Force. We'll have an opportunity to try and draw level and we go into the final two minutes of this game. Thunder Force looking to make this one count. Mike Pretorius looking to play to John Masethe. Billy Mulder now in possession. Billy Mulder extends the Vikings league lead to five points to three and we have one minute 40 to play.
right, final 30 seconds of this encounter. Billy Mulder for the Vikings. Foul called on the act of shooting there, so Vikings uh, awarded an additional point and uh, edge out to a six point to four lead. Clock running down. Seven seconds left and uh, Unfortunately for the Thunder Force, time's going to run out in this game for them. But Mark Matorius will put up the shot. Doesn't drop. And that is the end of the game. So Vikings knock over the Thunder Force by six points to four.
right, just about to get underway again here at the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. And we're down to the crunch time. Final four games now. Next up on court, we're going to bring you the game between the uh, Vikings and the Bulls. Alright, action starts with the uh, Vikings taking on the Bulls. Of course, the uh, team from the Bulls, we've got Donnie Sane, Eric Sambojo, and Rolf Reynolds. And for the Vikings, we've got Johan Krauser, Gideon Mayberg, Tabojo, Tanyani, and Willy Mulder. And straight away, the Bulls, all excited as they get uh, the tally on, uh, underway and of course uh, earlier game we mentioned the passion that uh, the number four Rolf Reynolds plays so this is sure to be a noisy encounter Shot goes up there for the Vikings, but uh, doesn't drop. Still, Vikings won, Bulls won, and uh, under 10 minutes to play in this game. Rolf Reynolds for the Bulls, trying to make something happen, but looks like he's going nowhere. And uh, shot had to go up there because the shot clock was winding down. Ultimately, shot clock violation. Vikings are going to extend the lead, and they do. Good uh, work there by Tabojo Tanyane. Donnie Stein finds uh, Eric Sambojo. Stein un and unable to keep it in and called for the out of bounds violation. the shot up and sportsmanlike foul called against the Vikings so so in that case it'll be a 
two points to the uh, Bulls for the unsportsmanlike. Vikings in possession with uh, Tabocho Tanyane. Unable to convert. Rolf Reynolds. Can he convert? He does. And he greets it with his customary celebration. Pass there from Eric Sambojo uh, and the shot clock violation against the Bulls team and Vikings will have the opportunity now to try and ex to try and uh, get get on level terms. Loose pass towards the Vikings player there. And uh, turned over. So. The Bulls have the possession. Eric Sambojo looks for Rolf Reynolds. Under pressure there. Tries to spin around. Sees it's nothing. Takes it out and now tries to put up the shot. Vikings now hold a one point lead. Vikings four, Bulls three. Rolf Reynolds tries to do a quick pivot. Billy Mulder, Vikings managed to convert and the foul means that they will pick up the additional point. And joining me in the commentary box is the uh, CEO of Wheelchair Basketball South Africa, as well as uh, IWBF Africa President, Mr. Charles Saunders. Welcome, Charles. Thank you very much, guys. And, uh, all I can say is well done. Congratulations to everyone. All right, a bit of a microphone issue. We'll be hearing from Mr. Saunders in a few seconds. In the meantime, Vikings holding a four-point lead over the Bulls. All right, so Charles, uh, welcome to the commentary box. 
great, uh, great event we have going here today. Uh, how have you found it so far? Well, actually, guys, you know, this is uh, making history once again in South Africa and on the African continent. First of its kind. Um, we've had a total of 76 veteran players that have come through. And, uh, of course, I hope this is the first of many, many, many. And the challenge goes out to Africa once again. Uh, that, we, that we call upon all of our national federations and say to them, guys, basketball is not dead. Wheelchair basketball is not dead. We have the age categories, and those age categories are veterans and masters. So please get yourselves ready. We'll launch this in Africa soon to be a three and three competition for Masters Africa, starting right here in South Africa. And uh, Charles, obviously a lot of work uh, has gone on behind the scenes to bring this uh, tournament to a fruition. How did it all get started? Well, congratulations must go out to Mike Pretorius and uh, to, to Johan Kraus and Kelly LaRue, who all uh, came through to me about a year ago and said, listen, we want to get a re reunions going. And of course, we held the first reunion of around about 50 of our ex-national players. And uh, from there, they turned around and said, well, why don't we get something introduced into to, to Africa, the, the um, 3x3 game, uh, a bit modernized with a different type of version because uh, our, our veterans are not as agile as what they used to be uh, 30 years ago. And of course, we created this type of competition of course, what came about was the inaugural tournament was let's all get together and just mix and match the teams and play wheelchair basketball. All right, and that's what we've basically done. So a year's work in the planning and I must say great support from the WBSA uh, executive board that have supported us in getting to what, where we are at this time. And uh, the first of many, I understand that there's plans that were put on my table today saying the next tournament is taking place in Durban, South Africa. So it's already planned. And uh, all of these guys are quite chuffed to, to be able to come out. Some of them haven't played the game in over 31 years. And they're back in the wheelchair. Modernized game. Uh, these type of wheelchairs they're playing in there didn't even exist when they were playing 30 years ago. Well, so, uh, and we, did, we, we are making history as well, Charles, because there is a new uh, terminology in this particular version of the game. It's no longer the fast break, it's the slow break. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've seen uh, a good couple of examples of that in today's proceedings. But, uh, but again, all about having fun on courts. And, uh, well, that's exactly it, isn't it? It's all about camaraderie. And of course, these tournaments are in honor of, of, of all the past heroes and legends that unfortunately we have lost to the sport. Um, this tournament is named after uh, Kovas Ushka, who was a, a South African legend, represented the, the, the game at various levels. Um, somebody who was revered by his colleagues and peers and they've actually named the tournament after him. So we, we are in honor of the, the Kubis Ushka floating trophy, which will be held for this. And the sad news, of course, with one of our former, should I say, first captain of the South African wheelchair basketball Springbok team who passed away this week. And this is also in memory of him as well, Chris Carey. All right, so the, the next game we're going to bring you is the encounter between the Marinos team and the Rockets team um, as we wind down towards the final, uh, final encounters. Yeah, and the one thing that I need to say is that many of these players are absolute legends uh, on screen right now. Uh, former coach of the, the South African team, Mr. Martin Bass. And uh, if, we, if we had a look at, at what he contributed to the sport, he played for the South African national team for many, many a year. Um, and it's great to see him back, to the, uh, back in the game as well. Uh, last night with the reunion, we were all talking about the good old days and, and how the game has evolved. 
So what we can say there, Mike Pretorius right there in your screen right now, one of the heroes, one of the good gentlemen that have put this competition together, okay, and was always known as one of the best four-pointers in the world had. Uh, ca carried many multiple gold medals within shot put and javelin and, and uh, <laughs> you name it, discus. I, I cannot tell you how many gold medals he holds. Of course, and of course, always known for character. What a character! What a what an absolute character for the sport. Along there, with Rolf Reynolds and Rolf Williams, also characters of the stalwarts uh, of the game. Stalwarts of the game. Yeah. So yes, a nice easy adaptation to the game. Of course, we changed the rules slightly from the, as I said, from the um, original 3x3 version and it's to make it a little bit more simpler for these guys uh, so yes it's not the conventional rules and please don't crucify us it's it's rules that were adapted to ensure that these guys can actually keep up with the tempo of the game yeah and and, and i think what's come out of it um, charles is for this particular tournament there definitely needs to be a, spe a specific classification uh, for the uh, for the aged yeah, absolutely. I think that what we're going to start doing is looking next year at creating the two categories, creating the veterans and the masters category, uh, veterans from the age of 40 to, to 50, and the masters uh, coming there afterwards from 51 to the oldest player on the court today, 74 years of age, and former coach of the South African national team, Mr. Viv Sierra. Yeah, very, very impressive, and he looked like he still got quite a bit of energy on, on court. So yes, just a shout out to everybody that's involved. What great production that we're having at the moment with the live streaming. Thank you guys. Really appreciate what you've done for us. Really, really great. Thank you very much indeed. And I can recommend out there, anybody that wants to use the service, there is a complete recommendation. I am extremely happy uh, as a result of what this gentleman has done for us. Uh, of course, Jerry, yourself, constantly with all the commentation that's taking place. Thank you very much indeed. I appreciate it. Uh, only a pleasure, Mr. Saunders. Of course, we cannot forget the uh, Sassel technical officials. Of course, Charles, uh, wheelchair basketball would be nowhere without our sponsors. And uh, a big shout out to Supersport, as well as the other sponsors. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, uh, Vodacom have been with us now for 20 odd years. Sassel uh, breaching 15 years now. And of course, uh, the likes of Diesel Electric that sponsor the, the home club here and have been um, really and truly courteous and, and assisting us with our electrical appliances and electrical lighting and such and such. So big shout out to Diesel Electrical as well. As well as the uh, Colosco who sponsor our uh, fr uh, Lions franchise and the Super Bowl wheelchair basketball. So but it, again, you know, uh, sitting in the administration of the sports without these guys, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today. Uh, absolutely. You know, unfortunately, money drives the world and uh, on the commercial level as well. The only thing that we can provide is a return of investment and a, and a very big thank you for everything that, that these sponsors have done for wheelchair basketball. Without them, we wouldn't be where we are today. And uh, uh, Charles, what's next uh, for wheelchair basketball over the next few months? We've got a very, very heavy schedule. Um, uh, COVID, of course, um, preventing us from, from doing many, many, many projects that we have started. Uh, let us hope and, and pray that that we are seeing the last of the strains of COVID. Uh, but yes, we've got a lot of we've got a, quite a huge program that's taking place now. Uh, come December, we've got the under 23s, uh, which will be taking on three countries to qualify for the World Championships uh, planned for Japan Chiba uh, in 2022. Uh, we've got, of course, in Ethiopia, we have our program. Uh, for the men and women's world championship qualifiers uh, full house of 
of um, actually 14 countries have entered. We can only take eight countries. We have six women, women teams that participate in as well. Uh, so a huge tournament for us. One of the biggest on the continent that we've had in many, many a year. Uh, and of course, then we go back into our domestic program again. Uh, not to mention the launching of our high performance webinars uh, for coaching excellence and technical excellence uh, with our referees. So, of course, we have to turn around and say thank you to Sassel for these programs. And of course, the, uh, the launch next year of our uh, school's 3x3 uh, program and, and as we look towards developing the youth of, of the sport. And, uh, yeah, absolutely. And of course, um, one thing that I did forget to inform everybody is that in uh, mid-December we will be hosting for the first time ever an under 15 schools program uh, that will be run right here at the home of wheelchair basketball at the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Centre. Excellent, so exciting stuff ahead here for wheelchair basketball. Charles, thank you very much. I know you've got a bit of final admin to do at this uh, tournament and uh, we are getting close now through to the final games and I think we'll get uh, Mike Petrus, so I'll go down and uh, interview him just before the final and uh, we look forward to seeing who wins the inaugural WBSA 3x3 uh, Masters National Tournament playing for the Quibus Ushka Shield. Absolutely. Thank you guys. Thank you once again for everything you're doing for us. Cheers. Okay, back to the action on court. We've got the uh, cool kids playing in black and uh, pink up against Maroon 5. I've been told that Maroon 5 are definitely not going to be singing for us today, so we've got them on court. Which is a good thing, because I'm not sure any of those particular guys on court can sing. So, scores are level. Can Maroon 5 pick up a rebound with Donnie Smith? And is fouled, so they will get the one point there. So they edge, the, edge themselves into the lead with just over 5 minutes 40 to play in this game. After this game, we've got Marinos versus the Rockets. Uh, correction, they're busy playing on on the other court at the moment. Uh, Warriors versus Vikings and then the Lions and Orlando. So we'll bring you the Lions versus Orlando game next and then the final between the Ghostbusters and Chicago. leading the cool kids by five points to two and uh, Maroon 5 side made up of Jacques van Skalkveig, Donnie Smith and uh, Jules de Corte and uh, the cool kids side is made up of uh, Tulumuzi Schlope, Maurice Pretorius and Peter Machoe.
good shot there from Donnie Smith and extends Maroon 5's lead to six points to two. And we've got two minutes 30 left in this uh, game. Cool Kids looking to try and reduce the deficit. And unsuccessful in that occasion, Donnie Smith able to pick up the uh, rebound, gets the shot up and is fouled. So Maroon 5 will be given the uh, points for the act of shooting foul. Converted again by Donnie Smith. So Maroon 5, 7. Cool Kids 2. And we've got just under a minute and a half left. All right, joining me, joining me in the commentary box is one of the legends of uh, wheelchair basketball, not only wheelchair basketball, but able-bodied basketball in South Africa. And uh, welcome, Nico Viviers, to the uh, inaugural WBSA 3x3 Masters Tournament. Thank you. What have you thought so far of, of, of the event? And I mean, obviously, you've been around for a wee while. Yeah, the, the bit I've seen, I got you late, uh, seems to be going very very well and uh, everybody's doing their their part the referees are doing well I've been watching them and I'm happy with what I see <laughs> that's good Nika Nika um, I, I know you've been around for a while but uh, when did your basketball career actually start in 78 i've been with wheelchair for about 44 years now is that all yeah <laughs> <laughs> and of course uh, many years as a as a referee yeah yeah all those years a referee even in able body we started 57 in 57 that's a bit before the wheelchair so so that's uh that's a good few years service i know you have uh, received a, a long service uh, award for here in, in uh, South Africa, and, and you are in a, a member of the IWBF Africa yeah. Hall of Fame. So yeah. congratulations. Thank and then, you. And thank you for all your, your efforts and uh, service to the sport. Um, it's uh, obviously greatly appreciated. Thanks very much. Thank and I mean, uh, Yaku, exciting to see some of your old, oh, my, <laughs> some all of these, my old friends. All your old friends on court, yeah. <laughs> Somebody actually said to me, with all these old guys, why aren't you refing? I said, no, I'll leave it to the younger guys. Let them do the job. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were just saying uh, um, we are going to have to rewrite the rule books because there's, there's a new uh, thing called a slow break, not a fast break in this uh, game. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you'd have to adjust. So all's good there. And the guys seem to fall slower too. They don't fall as fast as what they used to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, all, all great fun in that. Yeah. So. Yeah. And yeah, uh, you, uh, Nico, you, you stay, stay in touch with the game still? Yes, yes, I do. I try and get to uh, Mandeville as often as I can whenever there's, there are games. But, of course, we understand the situation at the moment. So, yeah, looking forward to coming back again just to come and watch. Exactly. And, and um, Nico, um, otherwise, health-wise, all good? 
a little bit of uh, asthma, but otherwise fine, no problems. Good to hear, good to hear, Nico. So, all right, so we're getting down to the uh, the final stages now. We've got uh, the game between, uh, on court at the moment, we've got uh, Marinos taking on the uh, Rockets. And uh, coming up on the on court day next, we're going to have the uh, Warriors against the Vikings, by the looks of it. Hmm. It's interesting. It's very, very interesting. What do you think of uh, some of these colours for these kits, Nico? Beautiful. <laughs> I think it's. I think it's. Uh, they did very well. I think Charles and his team did very well in organising the whole event. So. Yes, I think uh, you know. Now it's nice to have uh, the pr program for the Masters. Uh, it's been a long time coming, so yeah. you know, it's it's uh, hopefully going to be be, be uh, an annual event going forward. And Charles alluded earlier that uh, next year they're looking at hosting it in, in Durban. So That's what good, I hear. good to get it around the country. Yeah. Uh, so, so any any message to any of the uh, old guys sitting in the in the in their lounges now, maybe watching this feed, and uh, <laughs> maybe time well, for them to dust off the, the the wheelchairs and get going. Yeah, I think they should dust off the wheelchairs. There's a product on the market that cleans it very nicely, that it looks like a new chair. And uh, they should come back, clean the chairs, and just come and play for the fun of it. <laughs> Good stuff. Okay. All right, Nico, well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, we're going to ask uh, current 3x3 national team captain uh, Cecil Dumont to join us. So we'll hand over the mic. And, and, and again, thank you, Nico. Thank you. All right, so with me I've got uh, the South African uh, 3x3 national team captain, uh, Cecil Dumont. Welcome to the commentary box. Um, Cecil, obviously, having been part of the... Sorry about that, uh, guys. Cecil's mic's on now. Cecil, um, having been part of the uh, Commonwealth Games qualifiers in the in the 3x3, how have you found the pace of this particular tournament? This particular tournament, yeah, <laughs> it's very slow to do <laughs> The way we, we we play, actually played it, uh, the 3x3. Um, it's actually sometimes it's frustrating, but it's actually enjoyable playing against these old leg old legends that's, that's playing here. So, I mean, obviously, as a, as a veteran of the sport yourself, you've you've obviously grown up and learnt a lot from some of the players that you played against today. And uh, you know, the, I think the important thing about an event like this is is getting the guys back on court and having some fun. Yeah, I know it's it's like that. Um, it's actually an honour to play with these guys. I've never played uh, uh, with a lot of them, but all the stories that I've heard and how good they actually were, it's actually nice to to, to play against them and play with them. And yeah, I yeah, know it is. It's, uh, it's really an honor to play with the, these guys. And Cecil, in terms of the, uh, the national team now, uh, obviously we've uh, qualified for the Commonwealth Games in the 3x3 version. Um, how much excitement is there within the, the current crop of players for this particular version of the game and leading into the Commonwealth Games? Well, I think the guys are very excited. Um, what, I think it's the first time ever we've qualified um, for the Commonwealth, Commonwealth guys with, with wheelchair basketball. So uh, with the 3x3, it's actually a fast game, so I cannot wait to go. Um, I think it's one of my, the biggest tournaments that I've ever qualified for. Um, so I think the guys are already, they, they first, one feet is already on the plane <laughs> going to, 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 to England. Yeah, of course, uh, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's the first time that wheelchair basketball is at a Commonwealth game, so it's exciting for, for the sport. And um, yeah, a lot, a, lot to, a lot of work to, go, to obviously get through to Birmingham uh, in m uh, July next July, year. Yeah. So yeah, um, uh, Cecil, in terms of uh, the development of wheelchair basketball, um, obviously I know you've, you've sort of stepped down from the national team and the 5-on-5 five five version of it. Um, how do you see the future? Where, you know, from a player's perspective, what, what needs to be done so that we can get to the, the, the higher levels? 
Well, I think we, we, we need to get all these youngsters, the under-22s and under-23s, um, get them more involved, um, get them to go and play overseas um, if they can. If, if it, the, the clubs want, you know, they, they normally pick these young youngsters. And I think we've got all the talent in, the, in this country, especially the young guys. I, I, my fellow Romeno that, that, that I know, he's 17 years old. Um, I think he can personally go, if he goes and play overseas, he will just be a, 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 a plus punt for, for our national team. And they can learn a lot from these guys. Like Alain Matatasse, that's the moment in, in France. You know, these guys can then go and they can just grow. Yes, yeah, some really some, some exciting youngsters. And um, we've had some approaches for some of our youngsters from the likes of um, Alabama, Alabama University. Um, so this this exciting times ahead, I think, which is which is good. Yeah, it's and, very good. And good to to see Cecil still involved, uh, playing for the Kurlosko Lions and the Super Sport Wheelchair Basketball Series. Uh, you still got still got some uh, fuel in the tank, see Cecil. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I enjoy it still. So the day that I don't enjoy it anymore, and it's a it's a step for me to go and play, then I'll resign totally uh, yeah. out of basketball. Cecil, thanks very much. I know you've got a game coming up next. You're playing in the finals. Yeah. So good luck against the uh, Ghostbusters. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll chat to you a bit later. Thank okay. you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks a lot.
One, two. Take one, take one. All right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, down courtside now with uh, Mr. Mike Petorius. He's uh, the gentleman uh, I've been talking about most of the afternoon during uh, commentary. Uh, Mike Petorius is the guy that uh, worked with the uh, Masters Committee to make this event happen. Mike, thank you for joining us. First Thanks, of all, man. congratulations on getting such a great event up and running. I'm sure it's a lot of hard work. Not actually a hard work. The only problem, the only problem I got is we we work all together. Charlie was there that he backed us up, you know. And um, it, it's easy, you know. The, once you phone the guy and you tell him, listen, yeah, we need this guy, we need that guy, and we need that guy. We work together as one team, and this is how we got it together. It was quite a lot of hard work, but it paid off. And. Uh, um, no, I think I think Charlie and I think mo most of my old guys for their hard work that they did. Because um, I had a committee and then I had a, a guy from each province that I con contacted him and he did the, the most of the work for us. So no, that's it's, it's working together that made this. Not only one person. Without them, <coughs> I wouldn't get where we are now today. And um, Mike, uh, what was it like to be back on court? Um, I'll only know tomorrow. Yeah, so I was uh, talking earlier about the fact that I'm sure a few physiotherapists and chiropractors will be busy this week. And then none of them are busy. We so we surprised them. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. <laughs> but this year, now we're fit enough. We can handle this. We've been in this game for years, so we know what it's like. You know? And uh, Mike, uh, how have you... Um, seen the uh, development of the sport since, since obviously you haven't been involved uh, since you retired uh, what well, needs to be actually, done it, it's not actually retired it's mostly suspended, let's put it that way <laughs> <laughs> but anyway I've got guys that, no, we got to continue with uh, this this is not a one thing off we need to, to run a league and get the guys, the only problem with us is financial we haven't got that to go and say, get in the aeroplane and go and play against Northerns, go and play against Western Province, Natal. So we, we only see the guys once a year and we got to make the best of it. All right, great. Well, Mark, thank you very much. I believe uh, the, ne the plans are Durban next year, is that correct? Durban next year. I've got a raffle for 20 rand, so we got about 200 rand in our kitty for next year. So let's see, we'll build on that. Excellent. Well, the weather's always good down in Durban, and we look forward to seeing you guys all down there next year. And uh, just from on behalf of WBSA, thanks for all the work that the whole committee put in, and what a fantastic event. Thank no, you, Mike. That's a pleasure. That's a pleasure. We'll do it again. We'll do it again. Thanks, thanks, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you. And back to the action, guys. Thanks, Mike.
South Africa, the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre, welcoming you to the WBSA 3x3 Masters National Tournament. We are now in, going into the final matchup between the uh, Ghostbusters team and the Chicago team. And uh, all the action, as I said, live here in Johannesburg at the Vodacom Mandeville Indoor Sports Centre. and on court the two teams that have uh, progressed their way through the proceedings today and made it through to the final the pink team is the Ghostbusters team made up of Marcus Retief uh, David Curl, Daniel Mpaki and the 74 year old Viv Sierra former South African national team uh, coach and the team in blue is uh, the Chicago team and that team Consists of Yuppie Victor, Cecil Dumont, and Wilson Macobedo. Early part of the game, both teams uh, one point apiece. And David Cole for the Ghostbusters takes the ball uh, over the arc. Crashes in and uh, draws a foul from the. Uh, Chicago player Wilson Makobedu and uh, active shooting foul so they are awarded an immediate one point just uh, if you're tuning in for the first time today slight adjustment to the 3x3 rules in this particular event um, no free throws are to be taken it's the if the player is fouled in the act of shooting they are immediately awarded the uh, one point if they're inside the arc and if they're outside the arc they get the two points we are playing a 12 minute running time game and uh, or the team that gets to 21 points first Chicago team Yuppie Victor looking to drive past David Kill but uh, reaches and tips the ball away so the Chicago team will put the ball back in with seven seconds on the shot clock. So Victor will need to move quickly to make something happen here. Sets himself up potentially, loses balance, puts up a, a shot and uh, foul is actually called on uh, Daniel Mpaki by the looks of it and uh, brings the scores level. Mpaki finds Marcus Retief, shots a bit wayward and the Ghost, Ghostbusters haven't found their range yet. Yopi Victor trying to make sure there but uh, ball bounces out of play and the Ghostbusters claiming the put in but uh, referee's not uh, falling for that. And the ball will be in possession now of Cecil DeMont who finds Yopi Victor. Trying to break in and uh, no look pass there. Dumont forced into a rush shot there as the shot clock was winding down. So he was had basically no other option. Daniel Mpaki plays it through to David Curl. Closely watched by Yopi Victor. Shot clock at three. He needs to put the shot up. He does. Dumont and Vivsira helping Daniel and Pocky back up, up and ready to play. And 
Daniel Mpaki. Finds Marcus Retief. Shot a bit flat. Tavikul picks up the rebound, but uh, tapped out of his hands there by Yopi Victor. And uh, eventually ball out of, out of play from the hand of Cecil Dumont. So Ghostbusters wanting to try and get themselves into the lead. David Curl puts up the shot, converts it. Yopi Victor for Chicago. Foul is called against the uh, Chicago side. David Curl struggling to get back up. David Curl. Dumont trying to find uh, Makobedu, but uh, held ball, and uh, the Ghostbusters will pick up the possession. Marcus Retief, closely watched by Dumont, finds David Curl. David Curl's going to set himself up for the two point shot, puts it up. Way short, and uh, yells out in frustration. <laughs> Timeout called. Daniel and Pucky for the Ghostbusters. Finds David Curl trying to set himself up. Bit of balance there, but corrects that. Puts it a shot up. Rebound picked up by Yuppie Victor, and he converts. Draws the Chicago team level with the Ghostbusters. Just under uh, two minutes 45 to play here in this final of the 2021 WBSA 3x3 Masters Tournament. Playing for the Quibus Oshka Shield. And uh, teams are locked at, well, as I say that, Ghostbusters awarded the additional point there for the foul in the act of shooting. So Ghostbusters lead Chicago by four points to three. Ball tapped out of bounds there by David Curl. So Chicago will have another chance to try and Draw level. Closely watched by Daniel Mpaki. Good work from David Kill. Knocks the ball out of bounds. And three seconds on the shot clock. Cecil Dumont will inbound the ball and will need to set up either the shot, which he tries, and it doesn't drop. So now the Ghostbusters will try convert and extend their lead as we move into the last minute and a half of this uh, final match. David Curl looking for the gap. Closely watched by Victor. Ball comes off the ring. Dumont picks up the rebound. Unable to convert. 
but uh, good work there by Wilson Makaberu and draws the team's level and Paki to David Cole he won't miss from there so a bit of excitement as we go into the final minute yeah Ghostbusters leading the Chicago team by five points to four Yopi Victor looking to play in Makaberu finds Cecil Dumont unable to get it to Makaberu and the ball's tapped out of play with just about nothing left on the shot clock Bit of a dispute, well, inquiry from the referees as to why that shot clock continued to run. Should be an, an additional second or two put back on the clock. The table officials and the referee just trying to get it to the two seconds left so the uh, Chicago team have uh, have two seconds to try and get a shot up and uh, uh, Wilson Makaberu will get it to Dumont he will try and get the shot up which he does a uh, foul is called against the uh, Chicago team so silly foul there by Daniel and Paki uh, brings the Chicago team back into it level with the uh, 30 seconds to go. Are we going to see our first overtime of the day? And Paki, eight seconds on the shot clock. Time running out now for both of these teams. Da David Cole needs to get the shot up. He does, and he sinks it. And that, that will be the game by the looks of it. As the clock runs down, four seconds. Dumont trying to get the shot up. He does. A rebound, shot goes up and it drops. That will count, so we go into our first overtime period of the game. So just a reminder, the teams uh, did a coin toss at the beginning of the game and the Ghostbusters will have the possession. So the team that scores the first basket here will win this final. So. Momentum definitely with Ghostbusters. Mpaki, rebound picked up there by Chicago. They put up the shot, it doesn't drop. Yopi Victor working hard to pick the rebound up. Makabu unable to convert. David Kulna, can he convert? He does, and that is the game. The Ghostbusters steal the win. Uh, and uh, they are the inaugural 2021 WBSA 3x3 Masters Champions and have won the Kurbis Ushka Shield. So big congratulations to the Ghostbusters. They went the whole tournament undefeated, so deserved winners, but a good effort from the Chicago team. And uh, the uh, Chicago side acknowledging their supporters in the stands. So great effort from both sides. And again, it has to be, it has to be said what a great uh, event this has been. And good to see the old stalwarts of wheelchair basketball back on court and having a lot of fun. We will stay online as we bring you the uh, prize giving, which will take place shortly. And we'll be back then.
Okay, let's hope I hold myself together, okay? It's been, a, it's been a tough day for me, very emotional, but I've kept it in, so I'm gonna try and keep it in, okay? Um, I don't know what to say. This has been something else. This has been one of probably our better events that we've had in terms of wheelchair basketball. And the game, you know, is made of legends. And all of you are living legends. And I thank you one and all for participating in this and setting up something for the future because this is not the last and it's definitely going to go on into the future as a regular thing on our calendar. So I thank you one and all for being here, for participating. Hopefully tomorrow you don't feel too bad. Um, there's not too many injuries I see, so we didn't need to use the ambulance or the defibrillator or the oxygen or anything like that this weekend. So that's a good show. So going forward, this is something else. I, I, there's not a lot I can say other than well done guys. You are legends. You are legends to the sport. This is what the sport is about. And I thank you and I thank you for your participation. So well done to everybody. up and for Mike and the organizing committee Kelly and uh, Yopi is also on that committee if you believe it or not uh, but thank you for uh, for your assistance and to Charles of course WBSI for helping us along and uh, really it was a good result that we've achieved uh, uh, after a year's organizing so hope you can go from strength to strength um, I would like to call on Robbie Mbawa and Rulin, the Ushker family, to do the handing over of the, of the trophy. And also, uh, we, they also gonna hand out these vests to the winning team. So we've only got uh, 
uh, uh, trophies for the winning, winning team. Is that correct? Yes. The, it is the, um, uh, the trophy and then with the, the shirts and the, actually the kit. So Robbie, Baba and Rolin, please come along. Come forward. Yes. Yeah, All right, oops, that, that's what the kit looks like. You want to hand over the kit first, uh, Charles? Yes, we'll go for that. Yeah. Um, Robbie, you're the oldest in the household, so you go ahead and uh, just uh, take the, the uh, 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 shirt and the kit and give it to each of those winning a team. Baba, you go ahead as well. Number seven. Yeah. Geriatrics. Yeah, Vivian. Vivian. <laughs> Just have the captain of the team. Hey, 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 hey. 